But ironically, I see kids admonishing. I run to correction. Ain't gon' let me lie to me. A prodigy, an unwavering monogamy. And since he says seek out this book, I'ma let the Bible this is for my people, my nation, my kinsmen, my next to kid for my commandment keepers, believers in Christ, my friends. We go endure this fight. United in Christ, we can for we will obtain the kingdom. Believe them, this is the plan this is for my people, my nation, my kinsmen, my next to kin for my commandment keepers, believers in Christ, my friends. We go endure this fight. Night in Christ, yes, we can, for we will obtain this kingdom. Believe them, this is the plan. See, my father paints a perfect picture. Verse for verse, the understanding come through script for scripture. No matter the situation, patience comes through prior pillars. So build up your faith and know the maker is the one who delivers. These perilous times call for real teachers, real healers. Don't let your weakness to you cause you to urge people and as a bishop or deacon we commanded to feed the feeble don't let position now take us remember that there are equals we hebrews and ain't another nation not to thee most high the israelites we that like to see so when our sins weigh heavy just remember that christ is king he died for us giving all praises to the majesty see we have to be whatever these scriptures ask of thee and the truth is, without him, yeah, we just ask for heat. So you be a bold-faced fool, except that travesty, anti-Christianity. Got our people believing in some Caesar, dingy hippie, please. My father sent his son so I could defeat you. When my sins begin to weigh, I just remember I'm of his people. Endure pain, trials, struggles, or shoot evil. Cause when our Lord and Savior returns, there's no this is for my people, my nation, my kinsmen, my next to kid for my commandment keepers, believers in Christ, my friends. We go endure this fight. United in Christ, we can for we will obtain this kingdom. Believe them, this is the plan for my people, my nation, my kinsmen, my next to kid for my commandment keepers, believers in Christ, my friends. Endure this fight and unite in Christ, yes we can, for we will obtain this kingdom, believe them, this is the plan. Through all our pain and struggle, through all our blood and tears, we've been faced with many troubles, been faced with many fears. My people don't wanna read too much, don't wanna see too much while our souls get killed. Waiting on some white image, a cracker can't heal. Christ is our motivation, Christ is the foundation. Christ is the one who gave his life up for this holy nation. A black man like you and I, why we choose to hate him? Remake him, deface him, replace him with abominations, run the lies no hesitations, my nation gotta face it, Satan. Utterly destroyed, bringing on down the lies of this hated raven. It's scriptural annihilation, exposed the naked, bringing out this truth. These nations hate it. See, we the Israelites, brothers, while these puppies faking. Saints are commandment keepers, faith in crisis is our patience. Here we are awaiting our Lord and Savior. I did this for my people. Yes, I did this, this for, my for my nation. My people, my nation, my kinsmen, my next to kin for my commandment keepers, believers in Christ, my friends. We go endure this fight. United in Christ, we can for we will obtain this kingdom. Believe them, this is the plan this is for my people, my nation, my kinsmen, my next to kin for my commandment keepers, believers in Christ, my friends. We go endure this fight.
Sabbath morning, rise and shine, hit the block, make it hot, shake them down. We go at it till about four, five o'clock. Warfare, got my gear, I'm prepared for the op. And we talk it, how we walk it, yeah, that's just how we rock. Friday night, got a rest in the morning, hit the block, shake them down. We go at it till about four, five o'clock. Warfare, got my gear, I'm prepared for the op. And we talk it, how we walk it, yeah, that's just how we rock. Hey, I'm a workaholic, but I'm playing with me. Do this till the death of me. Death of me. I'm with Elohim. Careful what you say to me. Better watch your talk. We've been the chosen ones. I heard you claim to be. Yeah, yeah. What do you got? Hey, what do you got? What do you got? Cause talk is cheap. What do you got? You see me say. Yeah, we got that remedy. What do you got? Hey, what do you got? Heard you got that kill for me. What do you got? Cause I need help. What do you got? Cause talk is cheap. So I dedicate to do this every week. Yeah. We not moving corners. So they thinking that we weak. Yeah. Never get it twisted. Hey, don't sleep. We the sanctify. We pull up to your hood to clean the sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm blessed. Bless. Wolfie on the crest. Yeah. All I do is raving. Praying for the rest. To the east from the west. From the west. On a quest. Never rest. Bought that work. Dog. Bought it. I'm obsessed. Yeah. Sabbath morning. Rise and shine. Hit the block. Make it hot. Shake them down. We go at it till about four or five o'clock. Warfare. Got my gear. I'm prepared for the op. And we talk it. How we walk it. Yeah. That's just how we rock. Friday night, got a rest in the morning, hit the block, shake them down, we go at it till about four or five o'clock, warfare, got my gear, I'm prepared uh, for yeah, the yeah. Op, and we talk it, how we walk it, yeah, uh, that's just how we rock. Hit the block, make it hot, they be shocked, that's a why, watch a doctor, head chop, body drop, get the mop, this a jam, this a bop, for the flock, top of top, how much love, that's a lot, on the quest, not a yacht, got a Glock, it don't pop, that's a prop, nigga stop, ain't no fear in the mirror, check your spirit, watch, we just pick a corner, we any money on, from here to California, we pull up at this corner, corner, kamikaze sliding like a veil, your bells, if you try to play the profit, you gon' play yourself, Saturday to day to day we on the way with help big soldier we take orders like okay what else check the stats all facts never cap we be everywhere we at on the map in the trap me and ja back to back boost black script strap this is with that this and that friday night take a nap we wake up it's a wrap sabbath morning rise and shine hit the block make it hot shake them down we go at it till about four or five o'clock warfare got my gear i'm prepared for the op and we talk it how we walk it yeah that's just how we rock friday night got a rest in the morning hit the block shake them down we go at it till about four or five o'clock warfare got my gear i'm prepared for the op and we talk it how we walk it yeah that's just how we rock sabbath morning rise and shine hit the block make it hot shake them down we go at it till about four or five o'clock warfare got my gear i'm prepared for the op and we talk it how we walk it yeah that's just how we rock friday night got a rest in the morning hit the block shake them down we go at it till about four or five o'clock Yeah. Bless his head. Bless his head. Be bless his head. Yeah. See, I've been going through some things you don't know. Been holding too long, I can't hold it no more. The old man wants to kill me, but he don't know. That I've been dying daily, so we gon' fall. Even if I do fall, I don't stay too long. I may go fast to pray and add on one thing. Two chapters every day, Genesis the Revelation, gone to pray. Hold your face, I can say thing written in the past was for the day. Oh, when I be all up in them scripts, you know. Them demons can't get in the dish, you know. Revelation 1 and 3, you know. I read when I be going through some pain, you know I read when I be going through my trials, you know I read do the run me be kept me. I read bless is it, bless, bless, bless is it. I read when I be going through some pain, you know I read when I be going through my trials, you know I read do the run me be kept me. I read bless is it, bless, bless, bless is it. I've been reading to learn, you know, how the devil use those that don't know themselves. Or 
the most high got no souls that will be the pure gold standing in the end oh how we will rise if we die in the right the dead that's in christ will meet us in the sky gotta read from nine to five the devil hiding the grass like a roll line hold that change from 25 don't forget the one i read and got a home side whoa when i be all up in them scriptures no them demons can't get in addition no Revelation 1 and 3, you know, yeah, bless is the I read, when I be going through some things, you know, I read, when I be going through my trials, you know, I read, do the run me, be careful me, I read, bless is the, bless, bless, bless is the I read, when I be going through some things, you know, I read, when I be going through my trials, you know, I read. Bless is he, bless is he that, bless is he that, bless is he that, bless is he that, bless is he I read, when I be going through some things, you know I read, when I be going through my trials, you know I read, do the run me, be careful me, I read, bless is he, bless, bless, bless is he I read, when I be going through some things, you know I read, when I be going through my Trust no, I read. Do the run me, be careful me. I read. Bless is it. Bless, bless, bless is it. Young Dumbass. Bless is he that reads. Everything he sees. Get eternal life. Yeah. Dream team. Dream team. Banjo Bites in our area. Okay. 100 to my last day, day. Before I hit the streets, always gotta pray, pray. Run up to the spot, wanna wow. block, but the work wow. not stop. Wow. Make it hot wow. all day, let wow. us break. Might be a one way trip. Yeah. Me and my brothers at the strip. Warfare. Strapped up, came up out the whip. Then we marched hey. to the spot, hey. on the block, let hey. it rip, let hey. it rip. No fear, dog, get a grip, get a grip. Might be a one way trip. Yeah. Strapped up, came up out the whip. Then we marched hey. to the spot. I don't need a mic, I need a reader. Deek the block beater. We gon' put it down, no line, no need to. Shout out to the teachers. Two man can't bring an Easter. Call it what you want, huh? You gon' feel the heat out of Peter. If a heretic approach, we gon' beat him. Stress fall in line. Chairs turn the heat up on the meter. Think it's nothing, you ain't running from the Reaper. Your mama ain't either. Or Big Bone Sheila. Running behind a woman, he gon' turn your ass to Cedar. Bang, bang with it. If you need it, we gon' feed you. Ain't nothing to get instruction from the leaders. You ready for a change? Bring it to the people. Brother standing bold, purple gold with no equals. Hold the dead line, that's a sign of a Hebrew. We ain't worried about his life. Ready to die for this kingdom. Believe him. Might be a one way trip. Yeah. Me and my brothers at the strip. Warfare. Strapped up, came up out the whip. Then we marched hey. to the spot. Hey. On the block, let hey. it rip, let hey. it rip. No fear, dog. Get a grip, get a grip. Might be a one-way trip. Yeah. Strapped up, came up out the whip. Then we marched hey. to the spot on the block. Let hey. it rip, let it rip. I miss a day, then I probably feel a way. Wait. Rolling with the pack, so you know we on a way. Wait. Face like rocks, and the squad never play. And we got the block in a chokehold for the day. day. City gon' flood, cause we coming with the way. Wait. Shout out to the elders for the way y'all pay. Yeah. Double honest for the hard work getting gave. Always kept the real from the start to the grave. Hey. NY Detroit, shout out to the A. Yeah. Game plan, then we run a blitz where you stay. Yeah. Worldwide, never really think small ways. Nah. Came for the sheep, and you dogs gotta pay. Yeah. Elohim said he got something for the rats. Wow. Loyal to the cars, and I can't stand a rat. Bench of vice wow. going hard, yeah, we push it to wow. the max. And it's brutal to wow. the bank, we be laying up wow. stacks. Might be a one way trip. Yeah. Me and my brothers at the strip. Warfare. Strapped up, came up out the whip, then we marched hey. to the spot. Get a grip, get a grip. Might be a one way trip. Yeah. Strapped up, came up out the whip. Then we marched hey, to the spot hey, on the block. Hey. Little rip. Defender of the feet, man. Anything goes. Kiss my daughter and my son. Tell them kingdom is the goal. No more sorrow. City make out a goal. Time is easy to even though we grow old. Man, I risk everything just to save one soul. My treasure in a heaven, beer, silver, and gold. This are the dream team. I saw we big and we bold. Straight to the end, and you know we not nah fall. It's crazy how we came here on ships And they ain't sent us back yet The 
Let's go Israel, I'm ready to dip But we ain't even packed yet They say this is the land of freedom But I ain't free and I ain't dumb We still in our captivity Yeah We still in our captivity I'm so tired I just wanna lie down They don't don't want us to find out I know that they don't want to see us running Oh well, they gon' have to take what's coming They said uh, all these other nations around us Just to confound us Oh na na, I know that They just trying to wait but the time's up Yeah, the time's up I die just to save my own life I die my whole nation make it but the messiah said he's on the way came here as slaves so we the ones that's getting saved america is not a home or a city it's a company Send us back yet. Let's go, Israel. I'm ready to dip. But we ain't even packed yet. No, 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 no. They say this is the land of freedom. But I ain't free and I ain't done. I ain't that dumb. We still in our captivity. Yeah. We're still in our captivity. America to Canada. Canada to Russia. China, yeah, we over there. You better know your brother, see ya. South America to Mexico, Haiti to Jamaica. Your brother's coming over there to the man fair road to free ya. DR to the PR. Israel, that's who we are. The prophet's going back to Africa because our minds are still in that ER. Better days are coming. Better days are coming. I'm talking all nations in the valley. When Christ come, they running. I know. Israel, we won't back down. No more, he just taking our crown. Salvation can't come without no tears. We've been waiting for years. Now we standing with our fears, screaming. Better, better days are coming. We screaming. No more fishing, then we'll be hunting. Better, better days are coming. No weeping, then no more mourning. It's crazy how we came here on ships. They ain't sent us back yet Let's go Israel, I'm ready to dip But we ain't even packed yet no, 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 no. They say this is the land of freedom But I ain't free and I ain't dumb, I ain't that dumb. We still in our captivity yeah. We still in our captivity Check, brothers and sisters, we're about, we're gonna start in 10 minutes. 10 minutes, all right? 10 minutes. Why are you so deceitful? You're trying to trip up the people. You can't control your ways, but you complain all the day. Oh, You're doing things not oh, convenient. I pull a script I can tell. There is no knowledge within you. Oh, I think you're gonna reverberate. Oh, man. I think you're gonna reverberate. Oh, Same one, that says I'll never hate. Now you're trying to. 
wanna leave you tryna separate you both oh, forever, babe. Oh man, I think you go and rap a babe. Yeah, I think they did. Yeah. Before every enterprise we sought counsel. The way you acted now, it's not like it's not See, I'd rather leave than to start fighting. Yeah. Unequally yoked is what the words say. Words say. Railing for railing is not my foreplay. Nah. Stay together, do what the songs say. Bonnie ain't collide with Clyde, now we in the hallways. We all make mistakes, but don't give excuse to do it. Yeah. We all in the race, and everyone's a winner. Winners. But staying with a reprobate mind will keep you off track. Yeah. And you don't want to backslide. Think you gon' rap a babe? Oh man, think you gon' rap a babe? Oh man, yeah, you gon' rap a babe? Oh man, you the same one that says they'll never hate. Now you tryna leave, you tryna separate, you gon' rap a babe? In the truth, you had zeal like a spark. But when the trials came, you straight departed. Temptation gonna come and yours did. But you tossed to and fro with all evil like a little kid. Check it out. You called a deacon telling lies. Mad cause they told the truth. You pray until the Lord flies. Sitting sweet, guess you got a sweet tooth. The most I knocking down your demons. Putting chains on your door like your Morgan Freeman. Your sisters and your brothers, you do not esteem them. No. Take it there, huh? Causing contradiction in your mind, huh? Nah, you don't wanna take it there. Take it there. You're a false alarm. You're going off, but you're not being warned. And slowly you fall apart, fall apart, fall apart. I think you're going rap, babe.
Turn me up for outside. Check, check. Mike, check. All right, brothers and sisters, let's have a seat. Actually, we got to send up the prayers. Stand up. Stand up. Face Jerusalem, please. Sisters, cover your heads. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 36 and verse 1. Have mercy upon us, O God of all, and send thy fear upon all the nations that see not after thee. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations, and let them see thy power. As thou wast sanctified in us before them, so be thou magnified among them before us. And let them know thee as we have known thee, that there is no God but only thou, O God. Show new signs and make other strange, other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Raise up indignation and proud wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Make the time short. Remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful works. Let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire, and let them perish that oppress the people. Smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say, There is none other but we. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together, and inherit thou them. As from the beginning, O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name, and upon Israel, whom thou hast named thy firstborn. O be merciful unto Jerusalem, thy holy city, the place of thy rest. Fill Zion with thine unspeakable oracles, and thy people with thy glory. Give testimony unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning, and raise up prophets that have been in thy name. Reward them that wait for thee, and let thy prophets be found faithful. O Lord, hear the prayer of thy, serv of thy servants according to the blessing of Aaron over thy people, that all they which dwell upon the earth may know that thou art the Lord, the eternal God. Heavenly Father, we come before thee in thy son's name, Father, thank you always for all things, Father. We ask you, Father, that you bless this new school, Father, this new congregation here, Father, that you bring in more laborers, Father, that you allow us, Father, to push this word, Father, to the four corners of the earth, Father, in thy son's name, Father. We ask that you bless those, Father, that are weak in spirit, we bless, that you bless those also, Father, that are sick amongst us, Father. In thy son's name, we come before thee, thanking thee always for all things. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, pay shit, saints, sons of God, hand, salute, salute, down, face, sisters. To the mothers, daughters, and sisters of Israel, we say shalom. All right, congregation of Israel, be seated. Security, you know the protocol. Brothers, pens and papers. Nobody should be on their phones. Phones on silent. Everybody paying attention, taking notes to the class. All praises. So good to be back in Dallas. Sisters, how y'all doing this Sabbath day? Brothers, how are y'all doing? All praises. I'm glad to see the officers and the officers on the side, right? Oh, look, get a lion's here. Okay. Uh, we've been doing some work here. Uh, Nigeria's get a, also get a lion. Myself, you wasn't with us, right? Your wife didn't let you come. All right. Uh, I think Captain Isaac was with me. Who else? Captain Shema, you was there. Hoshea, you no, your wife didn't let you come either. Uh, who else? 
<laughs> but we are, we're doing some good work out there. Praise and thanks to you, brothers and sisters, and your constant support of this truth. I'm glad for Dallas that they got this new school. It looks wonderful. Uh, I like the little, who's the little turquoise covered uh, in the back? The sisters got little turquoise head coverings. That's so cute. You see that? All praises, all praises. Uh, you're doing a good work. I'm glad to see brothers came out in droves. Sisters always come out in droves. Yeah, did y'all answer the, the sister's question? Because I always get emails. Nobody talks about their question. You answered their question? All right. Good, good, good. Uh, if y'all didn't see, if y'all, those of you that were not here last night, we went over the four stages of disloyalty, the four stages of disloyalty. So Captain Isaac's going to have that up this week, you said, right? This week. So make sure y'all take a gander at that. Uh, today we're going to continue... And what the same series we've been going over, if I can find my notes, yes, the Revelation, the fifth chapter. I asked last night in uh, class, how many of y'all been reading? Let me do it again. How many of y'all been reading four chapters a men and women? Let me see. Raise your hand. Oh, it's a little better. I know most of them ain't in Dallas here because Dallas only had three members. Three members that raised their hand. Yesterday, last night, only three, but they all saw Queen and Slim. I was shocked. I said, all right, Dallas, rah, rah, rah. Go Dallas. All right, so <laughs> we're going to continue in Revelation 5. For those of you who are studying, you'll catch up on this. Those of you who are not studying, uh, Captain Isaac will have to go through the milk again with you and take you through the meat. Is that all right, Captain Isaac? You know, your class on IFOs and all this, great. But uh, they didn't know who King, some of them didn't know who King David was. Come on, Cap. They didn't know the history with Moses. I'm like, so all that, that, that remind me of walking with the Giants with Deacon Nathan, your class. <laughs> yeah, walking with the Giants. Who's David? Who's King David? I don't know. Who's that guy? Wow. What did Moses do? I don't know what he did. All right, let's go to Revelation. Who's reading for me? <clears throat> I'll say get a lie. Who? I'll say get a oh, lie. Oh, okay, get a lie. Oh, you all right. Uh, Revelation chapter 5, read verse 1 for me. Yes, sir. The book of Revelation chapter 5 and verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. So this is uh, John is seeing a vision of the Heavenly Father sitting on a throne. And he sees in his hand the Bible. That's right, the book that he sees is what we call today the Bible, okay? And it was sealed with seven seals. Give me Daniel chapter 12 and verse 9. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 9. The book of Daniel chapter 12 and verse 9. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. You see what the Lord told Daniel here? So all that Daniel had learned and wrote and prophesied about, he let Daniel know that the words are sealed until when? Till the time of the end, meaning until these last days, all right? So <clears throat> a lot of the things, for example, I'll give you an example. Give me, again, like, give me second Esdras, I believe it's chapter 11. Might be chapter 12. I always get mixed up with those two. Second Esdras. Mm, yeah, Second Esdras chapter. Let me look. Chapter 12, I'm sorry. Chapter 12 and verse 10 to 12. Watch what he says. Esdras. The book of Second Esdras, chapter 12 and verse 10. <clears throat> and he said unto me, this is the interpretation of the vision. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. So the, when you read Daniel, the seventh chapter, Isaac will go over that with Dallas, I guess, next year maybe. Go over that with them next year. Um, <laughs> Dallas going to hate me. I don't like that black nigga. Um, <laughs> Daniel saw a vision of four kingdoms and a final kingdom that ushered in the coming of the Lord symbolized the animal symbol was the eagle. But Daniel just, he didn't write that. 
he wrote like a monstrous uh, apparition the way he described it. Now verse 12. Verse 12. But it was not expounded unto him. Therefore now I declare it unto thee. So many of the things that Daniel wrote was not explained to him at all. Some things was explained to the prophet Ezra. Not everything, but some things. So when we go back to Daniel, chapter 12, let's go back there. The book of Daniel. Wait, 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 wait. Let me get it with you. Yes, sir. You know I'm slow. I'm slow. Daniel 12 and 9 again. The book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 9. And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So most of what Daniel wrote was sealed up in the time of the end, until the time of the end. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest. You shall die. And stand in the lot. At stand the in end. thy lot. Stand in, the, in thy lot at the end of the days. Meaning Daniel would come back in the last days and expound upon the things that he did not know about that he had recorded. From there, give me Isaiah 29. So remember, we're dealing with the, the Bible that was sealed with seven seals. Isaiah 29. Isaiah, the 29th chapter. And we're going to start at verse 11. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 11. And the vision of all... And, and the vision of all, meaning the vision of all that you see, Isaiah. Go ahead. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book... That is sealed. See that? Uh, the vision of all that you see that is recorded is as the words of a book that is sealed. Go ahead. Which men deliver to one that is learned. Meaning they go to theology school. They go here and there for study after studies. Go ahead. Saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. He says, I can't break that down because the Bible has been sealed. Go ahead. And, and the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Now, the one that is not learned is the brother that just mimics what he heard from those, uh, for example, those ministers that have gone to theology school. He just mimics them. Go ahead. Saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me. Meaning they, all, every, all our people say, I love the Lord. I love Jesus. I love him. Go ahead. But have removed their heart far from me. Meaning they won't do no law that this Bible says. That's what that part means. Go ahead. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. And our understanding toward God has been taught by the precept of the white man. Everything that we know about God was taught to us by the so-called white man. Who taught us Christmas? The so-called white man. And if you doubt that, remember and during the time of chattel slavery it was forbidden for us to read or write. So who taught us Christ was white? Who taught us about Christmas, Easter, uh, um, uh, Thanksgiving? Who taught us about uh, the three wise men? You know that they always say three, but it doesn't say there was three. Who taught us Christ was born December the 25th? The white man taught us all our understanding. That's why many of the things you hear our people say in Christianity today, it's just parakeeted from what they hear Europeans saying. And it's been trans passed down from generation to generation. What verse you at? Verse 14. Go ahead. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Now, I want to I wanna pause on that part right there. For the wisdom of their wise men. Their wise men is talking about the so-called white man's wisdom, because he's the one that taught us the scriptures. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Go to 1 Corinthians 119. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 19. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 19. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get it. Go ahead. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise mm -hmm. and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So Paul is... Uh, Quoting exactly what Isaiah was saying. Go ahead. Verse 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Right. The disputer of this world are those in society, mainly Esau and his nobles, followed by our people that support everything Esau does. Go ahead. 
So it's a where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Go ahead. Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Go ahead. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. With all the wisdom that this world has, they don't understand the one true God. Read. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So that's, you, people are expecting um, to be saved through some miraculous thing, but the Lord says, no, preaching is going to save the people. Why? Because it's through preaching that changes the hearts and minds of our people to prepare us for the second coming of the Lord. So let's go back to Revelation 5 and verse 1 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 5 and verse 1. And what I'm going to what I want to show you is that in with the Bible being sealed, with the the book being sealed, that it takes the Lord, the Savior, the Messiah, Christ to open up the understanding to his people. That's where we just read in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. That's what Isaiah was saying. He will do a work, a wonder in the last days. Okay, back to Revelation 5 and 1. Book of Revelation, chapter 5 and verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. So in this book, it was written in the front pages and on the back of the pages. And he said this book was sealed. Now, this whole thing is a metaphor. Okay, go ahead. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? He said, who, it, hey, uh, who's on the computer? Yosef, put up a picture of seals for me. Actually, you could put the, um, yeah, look, just type in uh, seven seals. Let me see what pops up. Put on, go to Google. I just want to see that. I just want to show you the image. I know some of you right now, in Dallas is saying, what's a seal? I'm thinking, oh, 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 not that kind of a seal. Not that kind of a seal. Images, go to images. Go down, 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 down. Okay, right there on the right. You see that seven, the book with seven seals, right? Those are, those are seals. Uh, like when a king uh, sends a letter he, gen he, se he seals it with his insignia, and he would stamp his family uh, emblem inside the wax. You pour the wax on it. Like, if you ever look at the movie Game of Thrones, anybody seen that? HBO. They show you anytime they send a letter, and they would close it, they would seal it with a seal. They would pour wax on it, put their family uh, symbol on it, so that you were not able, you were forbidden to open that seal. So that's what it's making reference to. So when we go back to Revelation 5 and verse 2 again. Revelation 5 and 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Go ahead. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. So there was no man, meaning no spirit of man that was up in heaven, meaning the angels. There was no man that had died. There was no man present. Nobody was worthy to break off those seven seals and bring out the understanding of what the word of God was saying. Read. Verse 4. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open, to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Hold on. Give me Daniel 12 and 4. Daniel chapter 12. So it said, no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Meaning un getting understanding. So the, f the first the initial appearance of it, when you're looking and reading this, that, uh, John is seeing a vision that nobody was worthy to even open those seven seals, to pluck them off. But it's really going into understanding what is written. Okay, Daniel 12 and 4. Book of Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. You see that part? The part I want to say, see where it says many shall run to and fro. You see that right there? Many shall run to and fro, many, meaning many shall run to and fro to look and to find the understanding of the Bible, what the scriptures is saying. Here's a precept. Amos 8, verse 11 and 12. Amos 8, Amos, chapter 8, verse 11 and 12. To explain many shall run to and fro. 
And that's the same thing that I believe it says in Habakkuk, the second chapter, if I'm not mistaken. You know what verse I'm talking about, Habakkuk 2? Yes, sir. Read, read that real quick, Habakkuk 2. So y'all write this down too. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2. two. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. That he may run that readeth it, meaning that he may run to and fro to try to get the understanding of what's being said. Amos 8, now verse 11 and 12, sir. The book of Amos, chapter 8 and verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Meaning what? There, will come, there was going to come a time where there would be no prophets, no teachers. Like it says, uh, hold on, give me that precept, Hosea 3 and 4, I believe it is. You, you got the, and this, listen, let me tell you, this ain't talking about now. Meaning what we're reading about the famine of hearing the word, it's ain't talking about now. Because guess what? Once the word of God has come out, you're not stopping this. He so wants to stop it, he can't stop this. You got that for me, Officer Gedaliah? Yes, sir. Hosea chapter 3 and verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without a teraphim. Give me the one, it might be Chronicles, where it says without a priest, a teaching priest. Gotcha. Where is it? Second Chronicles 15. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the one. Thank you. Yes, I like that one a little better because it tells you about a teacher. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter 15 and verse 3. Now for a long season, Israel have been without the true God and without a teaching priest. That's what I wanted. We were without the true God and without a teaching priest. Was that it? And without law. And without law. So that's saying the same thing Amos was prophesying about. Guess when that happened? When Christ died. Hey, let me show you. We'll go back to Amos. I'm going to finish this, and then I'm going to show you. Amos 8, verse 11 again. Yes, sir. Amos chapter 8 and verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but a hearing of the words of the Lord. But of hearing the words of the Lord. That's the famine that he's talking about. Read. And they shall wander from sea to sea. They shall wander from sea to sea. And from the north, even to the east, they Watch shall. Watch this. Even to the east shall they run to and fro. Mm -mm 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 -mm. There's a comma there. And they shall wander from sea to sea, comma. And from the north, even to the east, comma. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord. So you see that part there? Run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. That's what Daniel, go back to Daniel now. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. That's the proof right there. That's that part right there. Run to and fro to do what? Seek the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. Okay, go back to Habakkuk now too. Habakkuk 2, and that's where you left that one off. Yes, sir. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Run that readeth it. Run where? Run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord. Okay, now watch this. So remember, said there shall be a famine of the word. Watch this, 2 Ezra chapter 7. And I'm just going to get to the point. Let's start at verse 29. Sir. Uh, the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 7 and verse 29. After these years shall my son Christ <laughs> die, and all men that have life. You see that? So when Christ died, after him, when it says all men that have life, meaning the prophets, the apostles, the disciples, they all died and or were put to death, all of them, Okay. Like the Apostle John, the Revelator, he died in the year 96 A.D. on the island of Patmos, okay? He was one of the last ones to die out. So after that, there was nobody else after that. Read. Verse 30. And the world shall be turned into the old silence seven days, like as in the former judgments, 
so that no man shall remain. Meaning there was no man that could teach the scriptures for long, for centuries upon centuries. Go ahead. And after seven days, the world that yet awakeneth not shall be raised up, and that shall die that is corrupt. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her. That's the resurrection. And so shall the dust, so shall the dust those that dwell in silence. And the secret places shall deliver those souls that were committed unto them. So what I'm showing you here is that after Christ died, after those men that followed him died, there was no teaching priests no more after that. That's why when you look at the history during the time of the Dark Ages, our people was wicked as hell. We was worshiping Mary. We was worshiping the cross. We was doing all kind of abominable things. There was no teachers. Okay? So... When we go back now to Daniel 12, read that again, Daniel 12 and 4. The book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. You see that? Seal the book even until the time of the end. So we're at that time now. This is the time of the end. Now the understanding is coming out to us. Now the Spirit of the Lord is coming into us again. Like it says in uh, get that, a Revelation 11, 11, I believe it is. Just to show you. Book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. And after three days and in half. 350 years. The spirit of life from God entered into them. Remember what we read in 2 Ezra? It said all men that had life died. Now we get to the book of Revelation. The spirit of life from God entered into us. That's the, we're in that point right now. So what you are seeing and witnessing men and women getting the spirit of the Lord in them, gaining understanding that not only are we the Israelites, but we are commanded to keep the commandments. We are commanded to unify the people. We are commanded to gather the 12 tribes. So we're in that part of the prophecy right now. So let's go back now to Revelation chapter 5. I know I digressed a little bit. Read verse 4 again, Bishop. Yes, sir. Thank you. The book of Revelation, chapter 5 and verse 4. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Mm -hmm. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So what we want to look at is the lion of the, what's that tribe, Deacon Abiel? Judah. That right. That's right now. Don't get mad, Benjamin. Levi, don't get mad. He over here sucking his gums. <laughs> Give me that Hebrews 7, 14. Oh, praise. The book of Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. See that? Our Lord sprang out of Judah. Go ahead. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Right, because the priests... Well, of Levi. Now, when we go to Genesis 49, let's go there. Genesis 49. Let me just take a gander at that thing. Genesis, the 49th chapter. And we're going to start at the 8th verse. Let me look. Let me look. Yeah. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Now, Mm, 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 mm. Y'all get mad at that part if you want. <laughs> I know. We all know, of course, it starts with Christ. Number one, he is our Lord. It's going to start there with him. He's the first one we're going to give praise to. But guess what? All you other tribes out there. Well, y'all going to give. Y'all going to stop calling Judah lazy, shiftless, no good. Y'all going to stop that. The women going to stop talking bad about Judah too. Right. They'll be talking down on us. The Bible says... Read that again. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Hey, you know, I'm going to tell you why now. I'm going to tell you why. Remember the prophecy says, Zechariah 12, what do he say? I will raise. Tents of Judah. Tents of Judah yeah, we got to say it for Dallas. Dallas, I know we're going to help you all out. I will raise the tents of Judah first. That the other tribes of Israel do not magnify themselves. You know why it says that? Because right now, y'all be magnifying yourselves against us. Right. You know, what, what happened when, we when y'all went to Mexico? What'd they say? The, the Mexican dude told me specifically 
that there's no way Christ is a nigger. You see that? All the tribes be coming down on us. He said, All Christ. the tribes. That's all right, though. We're going to eat that for right now. We're going to just eat it. But as this word come out, y'all going to humble down. Go back. Go ahead. Go read that thing. I just love this again. Go ahead. Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Mm -hmm. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. That lets you know Judah lives with the enemy and would be struggling every day in this kingdom for rights, uh, civil rights, this kind of, all kind of rights. Even to get the word of God out, Judah would be struggling. That's what it's really talking about, the truth. Go ahead. Thy father's children shall bow down before oh, thee. Oh, sookie, sookie now. Yeah, it starts with Christ, yeah. It's, oh, it, start, yeah, it starks with Christ. We know that, deacon. We know that. Oh, but everybody going to bow the knee. <laughs> bow the knee. <laughs> hey, hey, the scripture says, and the house of David. Y'all remember what it said? Get it, get it, get it. I, get it. I just like I the way it, it sounds. I got to hear it. Zechariah 12, it might be verse 8. I want Deacon Malachi to hear it. He over here sucking his gums. <laughs> Oh, this is the book Speaking of in Creole under his breath. <laughs> <laughs> the, the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 8. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God. See, that? that's, that's ass music to my ears right now. The house of David shall be as... It's really going to the elect. I know it's the elect. Stop it. He's still trying to squeeze himself in there. You see this? Here we go. <laughs> it's going into the elect of 144, but we're going to start with Judah first. Now, let's go back to Genesis 49. Let's go back there. Hey, Abiel, did you drink my drink? It was right here. Dang. And this ain't alcohol. This is lemonade. This is not vermouth. It is not scotch or gin. <laughs> or wormwood. It's not wormwood. <laughs> Where we at? Get a line. Verse 9. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 9. Judah is a lion's whelp. You see that? That's why it calls Christ the lion of the tribe of Judah. It says Judah is a lion's whelp. A young, powerful lion. Go ahead. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Right. Judah looked like he was going to bow down and get to destroy the nations. It said thou art gone up. Go ahead. He stooped down. He stooped down like he was about to pounce on all his enemies. Go ahead. He couched as a lion. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion. And as an old lion, what happened? They gave Judah white women, drugs, and jobs. So we stopped thinking about overthrowing the nation. We said, you know what? That white woman is so good. The drugs is delicious. And I got a good job. Mm. So we ain't thinking about overthrowing nothing no more. So now, now after they did that, now here come Benjamin. Yank a lazy man. Look at you. Look at you. They don't realize they've been pumping Judah with drugs for years. We all Judah jacked up. Judah, Jack, Judah, 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 Judah. Go ahead. As an old lion. As an old lion. Go ahead. Who shall rouse him up? See, that? Who shall, that's the spirit of the Lord that we read about earlier today in Revelation 11. 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of, the spirit of, how does it go? Life, life from life God entered into them. That's what that's talking about. Who shall rouse him up? Now, here's the part we want to get to. Go ahead. Verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. See that? The scepter, meaning the kingship, shall not depart from Judah. Go ahead. Nor a lawgiver. Lawgiver means a priest. Go ahead. From between his feet. From between his feet. Go ahead. Until Shiloh come. Until Shiloh come. Because that means, Shiloh means peaceable one. It's referring to Christ. Go ahead. And unto him. And unto him, meaning Shiloh, the peaceable one, which is of Judah, which is referring to Christ. And unto him. Shall the gathering of the people be? So everyone's going to gather to Christ. It ain't talking about uh, uh, no commanded nobody in Harlem that everyone's gathering to. It's talking about Christ. Everyone is going to gather under Christ. Understand that thing. Let's go back now. Let's go back to Revelation 5 and 5. Yes, sir. The book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Ah, the root of David. That's what I want to get to. Give me that. Revelation, um, no, give me Isaiah 11, 1 through 4. Isaiah 11, 1 through 4. Watch this. 
the book of Isaiah, chapter 11 and verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. This is referring to Christ. Okay, letting you know that Christ came out of the stem of Jesse, that he's the branch that shall grow out of his roots. Go ahead. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord, mm -hmm. and shall make him of a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Meaning what? What does it mean, shall not judge after the sight of his eyes? Sometimes you can see something, and what you're seeing might not be what's happening. You know, a good example, if y'all ever see the movie, um, what's the, it, they were in Spain, and there was a bomb. Dennis Quaid played in it, and it showed you different, oh, Vantage Point. Vantage Point. What, anybody saw that movie? Well, if y'all get a chance, just take a look at it. They show you an explosion from different angles and people that were involved in it. So what you initially see was not what was going on. They show you as you see things from different perspectives. So Christ, when he made judgment, here's my point. When Christ made judgment, he didn't judge according to his eyes. There's a reason you don't judge according to your eyes because let's say it's your friend. Oh, I like Dick, that's Deacon Abiel. I got it. I got it. I'm looking at it. I can't bring no judgment on it. Oh, that's Deacon Abiel. I, I can't do that. That's judging after your eyes, okay, because you may love a brother or a sister. Read that part again. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Yeah, don't go by what you, like you hear women, you ever hear women when you start getting on, what they do? What they do? Cry. Cry. <laughs> That's to manipulate the conversation. I tell my wife all the time, hey, you know, crying don't work on me. I, do, they do something real simple. You Look what you done did. <laughs> I say, oh, stop. No, we're going to finish this argument tonight. Stop that crying. <laughs> you did this. <laughs> that's what they do and they teach their daughters to do that hey, I'm going to prove that yep. give me that Jeremiah 9 I'm going to show I'm gonna, <laughs> so you're sorry women brothers I'm going to teach you a secret right now this is what God says women do I think it's Jeremiah 9 yes. since uh, we're talking about crying women watch this the book of Jeremiah wait where are we going it's 9 and I think it's verse 18 wait 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 17 I think yes let's start at 17 the book of Jeremiah, chapter 9 and verse 17. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider ye and call for the morning women. Call for the morning women. You know Israel had some, they had a term for certain women. They were called morning women. If there was a funeral or something going on, the, the, the king and the said, call for the morning. There was a group of sisters. They could make everybody cry. Put you in that mood. You ever see these songs, these funerals, and you got the overweight gospel singing women, and they put that spirit on you, mm -hmm, and you go, oh, oh, oh. these women be professional. Read that again. <laughs> Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 17. Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider ye and call for the mourning women, that they may come and send for cunning women, that they may come. These women were cunning too. They hit a note, yeah, it hit your soul. You be like, oh, shoot. <laughs> Tears start running. You don't want to cry, but they make you cry. Go ahead. And let them make haste and take up a wailing for us. Take up a wailing for us. Go ahead. That our eyes may run down with tears. See that? Then they're going to make everybody cry. Go ahead. And our eyelids gush out with water. Our eyelids start gushing out with water. These women make you cry so bad. Go ahead. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land because our dwellings have cast us out. Now watch this. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth. Here it come. And teach your daughters welling and every one her neighbor lamentation. They taught their daughters how to do that same thing. So y'all be getting married with these women and you be getting an argument and they just, they just that tear come down and you now you want to, oh baby, baby, I'm sorry. She go, oh, I got him. I got him. That tears work all the time. Now, let's go. I mean, you made me digress. Where was we at? Isaiah. I don't even know why we went there. <laughs> Isaiah uh, chapter 11 and 3. Did we finish that? We finished 3, yes, sir. Did we read down to 4? No, sir, not yet. Go to 4. Verse 4, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 4. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity. Oh, but I know why we went there. He said he will not judge after his ears because right. people be crying, putting them spirits on you. 
So he said, I'm not going by what I see or what I hear. I'm going to do righteous judgment according to what the Bible says. Go ahead. Isaiah 11 and 4. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor. Meaning according to the scriptures. He's going to judge exactly what the Bible says. Go ahead. And reprove with equity. And reprove with truth. Go ahead. For the meek of the earth. For the meek of the earth. That's us. Go ahead. Was that it? And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. Mm -hmm. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. All right. All praise. So that's Christ. Now Revelation 22, 16. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. See what Christ said? He said, I am the, not only am I the root, I am also the offspring of David. Go ahead. And the bright and morning star. And the bright and morning star. You know what? Uh, hey, I'm going to show you what that's going into. Give me that scripture about the waters of Judah. Where's that at? It's Psalm 78 and 1, I think. Oh, uh, don't get mad, Deacon. Psalms. All you tribes, don't get mad at this. Is Where is it? Psalm 76 and is it 76 Let me look at it. No, that, 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 ain't, that ain't it. it. That ain't it. No, that ain't I it. I said 49. Is it 49 and 1? Yes. 48 and 1. I'll pray. Wait, let me look. Yes, sir. That ain't it either. Give me a, hold on. Hey, Abiel, talk. Deacon Malachi, I got two more highlighters for you, sir. All right. This next scripture. <laughs> All praise to the most high. I don't know how Laba does All right, this. I got it. Isaiah oh. 48 and 1. Thank you, Abiel. I appreciate you. I did good? You did good. Excellent. Better than Deacon Laba. Thank you. <laughs> Isaiah 48 and 1. I, th I think somebody said that, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I was in Psalm, so my bad. The book, Isaiah 48 and 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 48, verse 1. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob. Yeah, the house of Jacob is all Israel. Go ahead. Which are called by the name of Israel. That's the proof. You hear this, Deacon? You hear this? Listen, go ahead. And are come forth out of the waters of Judah. You see that? All Israel comes out of the waters of Judah. That's right. That's why Christ said, I, not only am I the offspring of David, I'm the root. Bring it out. He said, everybody come out of Judah. You all come out of Judah. You want to read it in context. You hear this guy? He wanted to say, come out of the waters of Levi. <laughs> read that again. Read that again. Isaiah 48, verse 1. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel, and are come forth out of the waters of Judah. You hear that, uh, uh, northern kingdom brothers? I don't care how light you is. The Bible says y'all come out of Judah, the waters of Judah. Go ahead. Which swear by the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth. Yeah, because we was wicked as hell. We was wicked as hell. So now. Let's go back to Revelation now, chapter 5 again. Revelation chapter 5, and we are in verse 6, I believe. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. So this lamb that was slain, this goes back to, give me that precept in John 1 where John sees Christ. Uh, the book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So when we go back to Revelation chapter 5, and it says, And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts. These are these four uh, angels, like you read about in Ezekiel 1, where they each had four faces. Uh, they called them, I believe, a seraphim, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, this is referring to Christ, as it had been slain. That's the crucifixion. Having seven horns and seven eyes. Read. Which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. So these seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits, that's the proof. Those are archangels. From there, get Revelation 4 and 5, chapter before. Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the, before the throne. That's the menorah. Go ahead. Which are the seven spirits of God. Right. So those seven spirits representing the menorah, that's the same thing that we're reading about. Now look at Zechariah chapter 3 in verse 9. Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 9. 
the book of Zechariah, chapter 3 and verse 9. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Those seven spirits, those are the seven archangels. Go ahead. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in Jerusalem, one day. In one day. That land is referring to Jerusalem. Let's go back to Revelation 5. Write that down. That's referring to Jerusalem. We're in verse, Revelation 5 and verse 7 now. The book of Revelation, <laughs> chapter 5 and verse 7. And he came. And, and he came referring to Christ. This is the Lamb of God. Christ came. And took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Uh -huh. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. We went over this a few weeks ago about the angels that had the, uh, the prayers of the saints. Real quick, we'll go touch on it quickly. Revelation 15, 7. The book of Revelation, chapter 15 and verse 7. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. From there, Revelation 8, 3 to 5. The book of Revelation, chapter 8, verse 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Yeah, so this angel was revealed, one of the angels was revealed in Tobit 12, 15. Get that? Yes, sir. The book of Tobit, chapter 12 and verse 15. I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. So one of the, one of the seven angels was revealed there, which was Raphael. So we go back to Revelation 8. And what verse did you read? read? I read 3. Read 4? Yes, sir. Revelation 8 and 4. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. That's why, like in the temple, when we sent up our prayers, like during the time of First Kings, when you read that, we always had the incense, uh, the frankincense and myrrh burning when we sent up our prayers. So it's a good thing to do at home also when you're sending up your prayers. Get some of them spirits out the house. All right. From there. Um, you want verse 5, Bishop? Yeah, go ahead. Verse 5. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. Meaning he's going to cast them prayers into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Right. So a great destruction came. Why? Because what was we praying for? Vengeance. We were praying for vengeance. Like when you read, give me that Luke 18. Sir. Book of In Luke. verse 1. Yes, sir. The book of Luke, chapter 18. We verse. often pray. We are taught in society to pray for blessings. We are taught that. So everybody does that. But nobody prays for vengeance, which is something the Lord is waiting for his people to do. Like the prayer that Abiel read today in uh, Sirach 36. That's a prayer of vengeance when you read it. And believe it or not, the Lord's prayer, when you look into it, when it says, thy kingdom come, you're asking God to remove the kingdoms that be. Oh, you, what, you think he's going to share his throne with, with America or Russia? No. Somebody's kingdom's got to go. Right. A lot of people will say the Lord's prayer without understanding. Let's read that. The book of Luke, chapter 18 and verse 1. Listen real good to this parable. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So it's subject matter prayer. Never give up. Always continue to pray. Go ahead. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. So he said there was a judge in a particular city. This judge didn't care about God. He didn't give a hoot about what man said or did. Go ahead. And there was a widow in that city. And it was a widow. Her husband had died. Go ahead. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. So she wanted vengeance. Avenge me of my adversary. Go ahead. And he would not for a while. He ignored her. But afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man. Though I don't fear God and I don't fear man. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Lest yet, by he said, yet because this woman keeps coming to me. Bothering me, asking me to avenge her, I'm going to do it. Why? Lest by her continual coming, she weary me. She's going to tire me out. 
Every day this woman keeps coming asking me to avenge her, avenge her, avenge her. Right? And the Lord said. Now listen, he's going to explain it, what the whole parable is about. Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. You see that part right there? He's telling you. That's what the whole parable is about. Us praying for vengeance, and although he ain't doing it right now, because of our constant prayers to him, avenge us of our adversaries, avenge us of those that oppress and destroy us, he says our continual coming to him wearies him, and he's going to do it. Read that part again. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Meaning, when I return, is there going to be any Israelites that really believe that what I told them to do? Only a handful. Some of y'all right now, I'm not praying against my enemies. No, Jesus said love your enemies. You don't know what you're talking about. The enemies of, that he said love was talking about the enemies of your people. You got to see, when you compare scriptures, that's how you get the understanding. One party says love your enemies. And over here in Luke, he said pray for vengeance against them. So which is it, love them or what? So now you got to get to understand. When he said love them, he's talking about those of your people. The vengeance goes into the nations that destroyed us. Everybody understand that? Sir. Mm-hmm. Wait, do you women understand that? Mm-hmm. Bishop, I just heard a video. I think it was yesterday. A brother said we got to love everybody. Really? Okay. Yeah. He said we got to love all God creation. The white man, the Indian man, the Chinese man. So don't man. pray for vengeance. No. He said, so Christ is wrong and the said, Negro yeah, is right. Yeah, the Negro is right. Christ is wrong. He's Levi, right? He's trying to be Levi. No, no, he's Judah. <laughs> yep. I know we sick. We ain't right in the head. He's pure blood Judah. Oh God! Can you take his card from him? Judah card from him? It's gone. Let's go back to Revelation uh, five. I believe we're in verse nine. Yes, sir. <clears throat> the, re the book of Revelation, chapter five and verse nine, and they sung a new song, saying, "Thou art worthy to take the book." And to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain. Meaning thou was crucified. And has redeemed us to God. And has redeemed us to God. By thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Can we look up, Officer Yo Yosef, can we look up the word redeemed? I sent it to you. Just click it. Open it up for us, please. Redeemed. All right. Was that the one I sent you? Where's Joseph at? Oh, that's the one. Okay. All right. Can you raise it so we can see it? Okay. Can you read that? Yes, sir. The first one or the second? Or both? Uh, you can read both. Okay. Redeem. For, uh, definition one. Compensate for the faults or bad aspects of something. Read the similar words. Similar words are uh, rescue, justify. Wait, you skipped the first one. Oh, I see it right there. Save. So redeem means to save. Go ahead. Compensate for the no, defects so of save, rescue, justify, justify, vindicate, compensating, compensatory, uh, extenuating, offsetting, qualifying, redemptive. So that first word under redeem, we want that word save. That's what redeem means to save. Let's go back. Let's go back and read verse Revelation 5 and 9 again. I want to hop on that word redeem <laughs> just for a moment. Yes, sir. Revelation 5 and 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to Pause God. And has redeemed us. I want that part redeemed. Give me Colossians 2.15. Christ redeemed us. Redeemed us. The book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So when he overcome, overcame death and all of that, that's going into him saving us. Watch this. Give me um, Galatians 3.13. The book of Galatians, chapter 3 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. Christ have redeemed us. That's what I wanted. That's the one. Christ has redeemed us, meaning saved us. Go ahead. From the curse of the law. From the curse of the law. Let me, hey, hey, Dallas, Dallas, where's Dallas? Raise your hand for me, Dallas. Dallas, okay. Uh, who do I want? I'm not going to, I'll get the brothers in the, how long the brothers in the black shirt been with us? Oh, that's Mighty Men of Valor? So I shouldn't ask them? 
All right. Uh, Ray Dallas, Ray, only two brothers up here from Dallas? All right, let me get you. You, stand up with the glasses. Uh, the curse of the law, explain it to us. Get the camera on him. Get the camera on me. Shalom, Bishop. Wait, wait, wait. I want the camera to get on you. All right, that's Dallas, representative. Go ahead, Dallas. Okay, the curse. All praises. <laughs> all praises. Uh, the curse of the law is dealing with the penalties of, under the law, if you committed certain sins, you could not, you would be, you would die. The penalty was the death, was death. So Christ made it so that we wouldn't die for certain sins. One, for example, uh, if you worked on the Sabbath, Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, no, we're going to make it real. So let, me, let me make it simple for you. Now, see, now, your answer, let me tell you. Wait, 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 wait about that. Your answer was, very, was based, was similar to Christian commentator, commentators. Not that it's wrong, but we want to be more descriptive about what the curse of the law is. Now, also Obadiah, I mean, get a liar. What did I say Obadiah for? Get a liar. Get Deuteronomy 27. Last verse, then we're going to jump. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27, the last verse. Yes, sir. 27, verse 26. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. All right, so you're in the curse if you don't do all the law. So now the question is, what is the curse? Go to the next chapter and read verse 32. Now, the key ones I always go to, 32, come on. Deuteronomy 28 and 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, mm. and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. See, Christian commentators ignore these curses. They'll just say, oh, it's death. Why? Because they don't want you to, us to know it's talking about slavery. Jump to verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Christian commentators never go into what the curse is in detail. They'll just say death. And that way it could fit anybody. Oh, we all die. But no, 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 no. It's talking about slavery. It's talking about colonialism. Jump to verse 68, please. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Uh -huh. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. For bondmen and bond women, and no man shall buy you. You see that word buy? We just read it on the screen. That word buy is the same word as redeem. It's the same word as save. Okay, everybody with me? Write, write, some of y'all need to write that down. Yes. Okay. Hey, read Galatians. I'm sorry, I got to do this. Get um, Galatians 3.15 again. The book of Galatians, chapter 3 and verse 13. Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law. Stop. Officer Asai. Give me the quick explanation for that. Brothers ain't studying. It is what it is. Shalom, leadership. Come on. Christ redeemed us from, uh, the, cur from the curses of the law, so we don't have to uh, sacrifice no more. See what I mean? No, have a seat. One more person. It's I'm gonna all right, Isaac. You're going to be all right. You go through the same thing Bro, in Memphis? Come on, man. I'm about... Let me shut up. Let me shut up. <laughs> so the curse of the law is slavery. Christ has redeemed us from that. Brothers, y'all don't realize this is the last... Ca After this, there is no more slavery. Can I say something, Bishop? Go ahead. Oh, y'all writing that. Hold on. Don't clap. Don't clap. Write down the scriptures. Come on. We're not raising retarded men in this nation, man. Write down the damn scriptures. We just went over it. The bishop is giving you the precept. Deuteronomy 27, the last verse. Deuteronomy 28, the curse of the Lord was slavery. Deuteronomy, we went over this. Come on, man. It's all right, Cap. What, are you going to say something, Deacon Abiel? Hey, give me Luke, the first chapter, sir. Luke, the first chapter. This goes right along with what Bishop is talking about. Luke, chapter 1, start at verse 68. Yes, sir. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Read. Y'all awake? Let's go. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Come on. For he have visited and redeemed. And what? And redeemed. And what? And redeemed. Come on. His people. Read on. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us 
in the house of his servant David. Jump to verse 71. Verse 71. That Read. we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. Christ redeeming us from the curse of the law. That slavery was put upon us by who? Our enemies. So we need Christ to redeem us from the hand of our enemies, brothers. Precept upon precept. Oh, praise us. So now, let's go right on back down there to Revelation chapter 5. And we were in verse 9, Officer Gedaliah? Yes, sir. Go ahead. The book of Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9. They sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. But thou wast slain and has redeemed us. Has to, redeemed us, saved us, to bought God, us. Go ahead. To God by the blood, by thy blood, out of every kindred. Now, this is what I want you to see. Out of what? Out of, out of every kindred. Out of every kindred. And tongue. And tongue. And people. And people. And nation. And nation. Now, when you read that, when Christians read that, they go, say, it's for everybody. Here's the precept. Get Ezekiel 28. This is one, you could go to many precepts, but this is one that I like. Ezekiel 28, verse 25. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28 and verse 25. Thus saith the Lord God, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel. You're going to gather the house of Israel. Go ahead. From the people. From the people. Among whom they are scattered. Among whom they are scattered. Go ahead. And shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen. Then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob. See that? So the Lord's going to gather the house of Israel out of all people. That go, now watch Revelation 7 and 9. Remember our minister used Revelation 7 and 9 to hem up some Israelites. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, out of all Notice nations. Notice it. Out of, out of what? All nations. Out of all nations. And kindreds. And kindreds. And people. And people. And tongues. And tongues. Stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So that's talking about the same thing, Israel being gathered out of, from among all people. That's what it's saying. And as many other precepts you could go to, that's just, Ezekiel's just one I went to. Let's go back to Revelation 5, please. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Watch this. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. See that? See, there's going to be no equality. It says we shall reign on the earth. I mean, reign means rule. And has made us unto our God kings. Kings and priests. Watch this. Give me Exodus 19, verse 6. Here's the prophecy during the time of Moses. <laughs> Exodus 19, verse 6. The book of Exodus, chapter 19, and verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. You know when Paul was explaining to the Hebrews in Hebrews 7 where it said, for our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. Because Moses went into great detail about the priesthood being Levi. But prophetically, he also mentioned here in Exodus 19 and 6. Read that again. Exodus 19 and 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. So the Israelite men shall be a kingdom of priests. And and. And an holy nation. Mm -hmm. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. From there, give me Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. The book of Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, the knowledge, of course, as we know, is God's law. Go ahead. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Because we rejected the laws of God. I will also reject thee. I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me. You know, people say, oh, that's all right. We ain't got to be no priest. To be no priest meaning you're not getting the kingdom. Because Moses just said we shall be a nation of priests and we shall reign, rule. So what are you talking about? You don't need to be no priest. That means you ain't getting the kingdom. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. We are in this truth to become priests of God. Read that again. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. 
seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Right. From there, Revelation 1, verse 6. <laughs> Book of Revelation, chapter 1, and verse 6. And have made us kings and priests. And has made us kings and priests. Unto God. Unto God. And his father. And his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Now Amen. watch this. Give me the prophecy in um, Isaiah 61, 1 through 7. The book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1 through 7. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim, proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, mm -hmm. to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. You see that? The day of vengeance of our God. So all of, that's what Luke 18 was talking about. Pray for vengeance. Pray for God to avenge you of your adversary. So now there's going to come the day of vengeance of our God. Go ahead. To, to what? To, to comfort who? To comfort all that mourn. Mourn where? In oppression, captivity, colonialism. We're mourning. Go ahead. This is more than talking about your bills. I, you know, I remember in church, my mom, I can't pay my light bill. Is that all, Ma? That's all you we crying about, light bills? Go ahead. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, mm -hmm. to give unto them beauty for ashes. Wow. To give unto them beauty or ashes. You know, that speaks volumes right there. You know, Malcolm X did a speech. He said, who taught you to hate your hair? Who taught you to hate your nose and your lips? So according to society, the way we look is like ashes. The, 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 the what's the word called? The standard for beauty is European. That's beauty. But the Bible says God is the author of beauty with the wool hair, the nose, and all that. So it says he's going to give to those that mourn in Zion, says, to give unto them beauty for ashes. What's, what that mean? That means the standard of beauty is going to change. Right. I was going to say it, but I'll leave it. Go ahead. The oil, of, <laughs> <laughs> the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified, mm -hmm. and they shall build the old waste. For Jerusalem right now is a waste. Come on. They shall raise up the former desolations. Jerusalem right now is a desolation. Good. And they shall repair the waste cities. Jerusalem right now is a waste city. We've been there. We know. Go ahead. The desolations of many generations. Mm -hmm. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Meaning the other nations are going to stand and feed our flocks. Go ahead. And the sons of the aliens. That's right. The sons of the white. This ain't talk, the alien ain't talking about the Mexican. The aliens talk about the, the white man. The sons of the white man, the sons of the Chinese, the Japanese, all the other nations. They're the sons of the alien. Go ahead. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Mm -hmm. but, what, but here's the part we want. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. You see that? But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. That's what Moses prophesied about. That's what we read about in Revelation uh, 5 and 10. That's what we read about in Revelation 1 verse 6. Read that again. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. And ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. See that? We're going to boast all day, every day. <laughs> this is ours. Bring it out. <laughs> <laughs> People get mad when we boast. The Bible says we're going to boast ourselves, okay? Gonna be, we're supposed to be ashamed. Probably going to do a video talking about you on the street yelling, you Israelite. That's right. We're going to boast that we the Israelites. We the sons and daughters of God. That's right. We're going to boast about that thing. Like we're supposed to be ashamed. He's going to say, do you realize y'all the only people that do that? That's right. We the only people that lost our identity, that lost our language, our culture. We the only people that happened that too. But now that we found out who we is... We're going to boast ourselves <laughs> from the rooftop. That's right. <laughs> Let's go back. Verse 7, Bishop. Uh, you said 1 through 7. You want seven? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Verse 7. For your shame you shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Yeah, you know what their confusion is? We lost our identity, our heritage. That's the confusion. Go ahead. 
Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Mm. Everlasting joy shall be unto now, them. We're gonna have, it's going to be, oh, happy day. We're really going to sing that song that day. We're going to have double of all that we lost. Let's go back to Revelation 5 and 10. One again, once again. The book of Revelation, chapter 5 and verse 10. And has made us has has made us unto our God kings and priests, mm -hmm. and we shall reign on the earth. We gonna rule on. We just read Isaiah sixty one. I always tell y'all the, the New Testament is an abbreviated writing of the Old Testament. That's all it is. The New Testament is very abbreviated. You have to go to the Old Testament scriptures to read the prophecies in greater detail. Go ahead, verse eleven. And I beheld. And I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. And thousands of thousands. Now, real quick, before, but I, I want you all to see this. Watch this. Give me uh, Revelation 11.11. 11. We read this earlier, but I do want you all to see this because I, I want to go back to the priest part where he said he's going to make us uh, kings and priests. And that's an honorable thing. All right, because right now we ain't nothing. Revelation. Well, we have a day coming. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. Real quick, hold on, hold on. I wrote something down. I don't know. You know what? You ever write your notes down and you don't know why you wrote a certain thing? Let me just look real quick. Read it again. Revelation 11 and 11. And after three days and a half, the after three days and a half, go ahead. The spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So what I want you to see, the nations are afraid of us being awoken now. That's why a lot of times we don't realize what God has brought us into, what he has called us into. He's called us into battle. He's called us into war. Because Esau and the nations have spent trillions of dollars to keep this truth hidden from us. So now we're waking up. And now we're seeing the pushback with the SPLC, with the with, um, news media, saying such things as we're a hate group. <coughs> and we've never done anything that you could put the word hate to. Like, what cross have we burned on somebody's lawn? Who have we uh, terrorized and shot up the house at night? Who have we done that to as a body, as an organization? Not no, not near one body have we done that to, but the, the so-called white man has done that. Okay, give me Amos 3 and 6. <coughs> the book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city? The trumpet that's being blown is the words of the Bible. That's being blown in the city. Go ahead. And the people... Not be afraid. Right, because now it's time for the people to be afraid. That's why what we read in Revelation was a great fear fell upon them. Not only do they say it's, see us waking up, they know what time it is. They know great destruction is coming, and that's what we're prophesying about. Thank you. Read. Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord have not done And when the evil comes through, it's the Lord. We're letting the people know it's the Lord that has done this thing. Go ahead. And the Lord have Surely. not done it. Right, go ahead. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. But he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So the Lord is waiting for us to gain the understanding and preach the word. Once we preach it, now the angels are what? Activated. Now he said, let's set these things in motion. Okay? Watch this. Give me um, <coughs> Ephesians 6 and 12. I'm going to show you something about this war we're in. Why are they calling us a hate group? Yeah, they, that's their job. They the devil. They got to lie. They don't want Israel to repent and wake up. They're doing their job. Let's do ours. Okay. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. I want you to pay close attention to this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Uh-huh. But against... Meaning that this ain't no carnal thing. We're not going out physically putting our hands on the nations. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. We're wrestling against principalities. Against powers. Against Powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Go ahead. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Was that it on that verse? Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you an example of what that's talking about. Give me Isaiah 47. 
I want you men and women to understand. Now understand, right now, I'm going to give you another example. They said with the coronavirus, you know what they're saying? Let me hold a talk. Let me just pull, I'm going to send it to you, Joseph, on the uh, group me. Are you eating? Just for the record about the brother that said that we ain't supposed to proclaim who we are. So you know, Deacon, he doesn't know what tribe he's from. Yeah, true statement. He don't know what tribe he's from. So we're going to take the Judah, the whole tribe. Huh? I just found out what tribe he's from. What's that? He's (laughs) African-American. Officer Yosef, you got that? I'm showing you all about this war. Officer Yost. Okay, while they do get that, I do want to say, Dallas, y'all did, been, y'all did an excellent job on this school. This artwork is off the chain. I wish we could paint it so y'all could see it, but y'all did. Give yourselves a hand. This is beautiful. Was it Yosef? We got it yet? Oh, it's still loading. What the hell? Is Abiel back there with y'all? Oh, there. Y'all see. Now, I'm explaining this about the war we in. Look what it said. Read that. The New York Post. CDC warns men about facial hair dangers as coronavirus spreads. The whole article in the several newspaper that printed this, they're saying that the coronavirus uh, locks into your beard, so shave your beards off. Now, this is wicked as hell. Esau's using this to get, and it's all against the truth, the laws of God. I'm right. telling you, that's what it is. That's what it is. And don't be, you brothers don't be simple and do that thing either. Right. What they going to say is in the fringes next? Hey, <laughs> I got something fringes. to say about that. You know, you know how this is wicked? The Chinese have no damn beards. How come they're dropping dead? Exactly. Bring it out. True that. Exactly. Good point. Officer Yo, so give me the next article. I don't think this one got a law. All you do is click the link. It should pop up on Google. Right, Officer Yosef? I guess not. Oh, here it comes. All right, can you... Can you read that? All, all I want is the title. No, I don't see the video. Pull up. I want to see the. It's in the independent newspaper. It's in the UK. Pull up. Raise it up. I want them to see the title. Yosef. 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 Can we just see the title of the paper, please? Oh, God. I think Abiella's in the spirit back there. Can we? Just, all I want to see is the title of the article. Mm. Mm. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't know what to do now. Why is this happening to me? (laughs) Yosef. Okay. Yosef, just retype it in or something. I don't know. Figure it out. It's just a, a news article. Hey, Bishop, you know the crazy part about Good. it? Yosef be trying to get everybody to buy the most expensive computers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I look at the IT list. I'm like, $1,700. But yet, <laughs> hey, you you freezing up in this joint. <laughs> Are we ready, Yosef? Oh, God. Okay. Can you just read the... 
Okay, read the title. Just read the title. Male circumcision needs to be seen as barbaric and unnecessary, just like female genital genital mutilation. You see what they're doing? It's the circumcision is evil. The beard is evil. Everything's wrong now. It's all against the word of God. What, the, what we're preaching out in the scriptures, now it's becoming evil. Do y'all see this? Sorry. So I want y'all to see that we're at war. We got to preach the laws of God and keep it. Okay, now watch this. We just read, go back to Ephesians 6 and 12. Read that again so I don't want us to forget the thought because we're at war. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Right. Now, what I want you to see with that verse, because you may be thinking, well, how do you know that that's not just talking about the invisible realm of Satan? Easy. When you go to, go to Revelation 2, I think it's chapter 2, uh, Revelation 2 and 13. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 2. Read verse 12 and 13. Watch this. Verse 12. And the angel of the church of Pergamos. In Pergamos. No, excuse me. In Pergamos. Right. These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Now, Pergamos is one of the seven churches in Asia Minor. Go ahead. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. You see that? Satan's seat was in Pergamos. Okay. So just like in America, Satan's seat is in the United States of America. Go ahead. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful uh, martyr, martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Now, we'll go over that in a few weeks. But now, what I want to show you all in conjunction with Ephesians 6 and 12 about we are battling not against flesh and blood, we're not literally fighting men and women hand to hand. This is a spiritual war against those men and women who have places in society setting up rules, setting up laws, things of that nature. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 47. So be before we can become kings and priests, that's what I wanted us to look at, there's a lot that we have to go through. Isaiah 47, let's look at verse 6. Isaiah. Chapter 47, verse 6, I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy. Mm -hmm. Upon the ancient hast thou verily, very heavily laid the yoke. Right. The white man showed us no mercy. Go ahead. And thou sayest, I shall be a lady forever. Right. Because the United States says she will be a lady. To be a lady is an honorable title. Okay. That's why in the harbor, of, uh, is it the Jersey Hall? I don't know they were arguing about that. You got the Statue of Liberty, okay? She shall be a lady forever. Go ahead. So that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart. What didn't they lay to heart? About them showing us no mercy. Go ahead. Neither didst remember the latter end of the, it. The Lord said you didn't even remember the latter end of it. Go ahead. Therefore hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures. America is given to pleasures. This any kind of pleasure you want, you come to the United States of America, you can find it here. Go ahead. That dwelleth, that dwelleth carelessly. This country dwelleth carelessly. Go ahead. That sayest in thine heart, I am. Why? Why do they say I am? Because they're saying that they're God. This is Esau. I am. Only one that can say I am is the most high. Right. Okay, but Esau says that now. He says, I am. Go ahead. And none else besides me. So they're saying that there's no other kingdom that can overthrow them. Go ahead. I shall not sit as a widow. I, I shall not sit as a widow. I shall not lose my allies. Go ne ahead. Neither shall I know the loss of children. My citizens. I shall not lose my citizens either. Go ahead. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day. The loss of children. You're going to lose your citizens. Go ahead. And widowhood. And w your allies shall be put to death. Go ahead. They shall come upon thee in their perfection. They shall come upon thee in their perfection. Go ahead. For, for the multitude of thy sorceries. That's what I want you to look at. For the multitude of thy sorceries. Go ahead. And for the great abundance of thine enchantments. And for the great abundance of thine enchantments. Now, uh, Yosef, just pull up a picture of witches and warlocks. Just do me a favor. Just pull that up. I want to see images. Hopefully no porn pops up. Okay. 
Right there. Right, right. Okay. Any of them? Uh, go down. Let me see something. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay. See that one on the left? Go over to the left. Right there. Click that. When you read, we're reading about, it says, for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. The first thought that goes into our minds might be images like this, but it's not really, it's not going into this per se. I'm going to show you what it's going into. Give me the video. Officer Yosef, please let it load. Lord Jesus, please hear our prayers. Let it load. And we want to start at one minute and eight seconds. Officer Yosef, please. Please, Lord, please. The video, Yosef, you got the video. Yosef? Does Yosef have the video? Yosef? Oh, Lord Jesus. Yosef? Oh, good. Thank God. Thank God. We're going to start at one. Uh, Yosef, Yosef, wait, wait. W Yosef. We're going to start at one minute and eight seconds. Yes, right there. I'll, now, this is going to explain. I don't want y'all to forget the thought. It said, for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. I want y'all to watch this very closely. Roll the tape. Volume, please. Volume. Hey, evangelical Christians are one of the most politically powerful voting blocs in the United States. And in the Trump administration, they've been given unprecedented power. They've turned support for Israel and Pause. hostility towards its enemies. Pause. Christians united for Israel. Every president, every president of the United States has a council of Christians who counsels them on foreign affairs, world affairs. Like, you see the young, the white woman right there in the pink dress right there? That's Paula White. I believe she took over Eddie Long's church, if I'm not mistaken. She took over somebody's church. Anybody remember who I'm talking about? You know who I'm talking about? T.D. No, she didn't take over T.D. Jake's church. Oh, she used to be. Okay. So these are his counselors, and Paula White is the head one. Keep playing now into core tenets of conservative ideology. And a big part of those policies is rooted in how they interpret the Bible. Pause. This administration is rooted in how they interpret the Bible. Pay, pay close attention to what's being said. Go ahead. In 2016, more than a quarter of all U.S. voters identified as white evangelical Christians. One of the primary differences between evangelicals and other Christians is their relationship with the Bible. Conservative evangelicals believe that the Bible is literally true. Sarah Posner writes about religion for a bunch of different publications. Many of them believe that the Bible is sort of this prophetic roadmap for modern life that events described and prophesied in the Bible will become true. The Bible is the most historically accurate book ever penned. The Bible is the one book that dares to predict the future with 100% accuracy. For evangelicals, the most important of the Bible's prophecies is the second coming, when Jesus will return to earth. The Bible doesn't say when this will happen, but it does say where. This is Jerusalem, world history as we know it is gonna end right here. Greg Laurie is an evangelical preacher, one of several who meet regularly to advise President Trump. They are the leaders of mega churches with tens of thousands of members. And many of them, including Greg Laurie, preach a belief called Christian Zionism. The idea that the return of the Jewish people to Israel is one of a series of events that will trigger Jesus' second coming. Jesus is telling us that the rebirth of Israel is a sign of the end, not just a sign, it's the super sign. According to this theology, God will reward those pause who it, help. Pause. <laughs> the rebirth of Israel is not talking about the white people go back in the land. Right. You're looking at the rebirth right now. That's right. That's right. That's the rebirth. Exactly. He don't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
They're mm-hmm. taking these white people go back in the land. No. The rebirth is now we're waking up. Right. We've been sleeping for a long time. That's the rebirth. He's not telling the people. Go ahead. Israel and punish those who don't. Jesus will be on his throne and he separates the nations. On what basis? How they treated how they Zion. Treat them, yeah. Let's back up. After the Holocaust, the UN divided up the then British territory of Palestine, home to more than a million Arabs, into two states, giving Jews who had been persecuted in Europe a homeland. Over the next few decades, Israel Pause. fought multiple- uh, Dallas, Dallas, raise your hand again. I have a question, I have a question. Only one brother's from Dallas now. <laughs> what is the name of the paperwork that allowed Europeans to take the land as Jews? You're not from Dallas. I just want Dallas. So one, two, three, only three brothers are from Dallas. Okay, uh, right here. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, leadership bishop. The name of it is the Balfour Declaration. Very good, very good. All praises. <laughs> yeah, get a brother a hand. You can get my hand. All praises, all praises. Mike Judah. Mike Judah. Mike Judah. So that's the, that was a, remember the year? 1917. But uh, so that's the year that they allowed the European when they started the paperwork to set all this up. But they don't tell people that. Play on, play on. Wars with its Arab neighbors and seized much of the land that had been originally set aside for Palestinians. Evangelical Christians see that as a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. It happened exactly as foretold. It was a miraculous act of God. They own that land and they own that city. Ever since, groups like Hamas have been fighting against the Israelis, trying to win that territory back. And the government of Iran has been one of their biggest supporters. That's part of the reason Iran plays such an important role in evangelical beliefs about the present state of the world and the future. According to Christian Zionism, if the U.S. wants to be on the right side of biblical prophecy, they need to do everything possible to protect Israel and punish Iran. Pause. That also helps Pause. explain why... So you notice that if America wants to be on the right side of prophecy, they got to do everything they can do to protect Israel and destroy Iran. You notice that evangelical Christians, in fact, all European Christian white people, none of them give you the biblical name of America in the Bible. Not one. We're the only ones that reveal that America is Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. She is the 666. She's the mother of harlots, that demon, okay? And their job, remember what Christ said? <coughs> Talk about these Christians. Get, hold that real quick. Hold that, Yosef. Uh, Matthew 24, where he said, uh, and if it were possible, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. 24, 24. The book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 24. And it reads, for there shall arise false Christ. False Christ, that's that white image of Jesus, all the different variations of it. And false prophets. That's these, what the Old Testament called sorceries and all that. New Testament, they say false prophets. Go ahead. And shall show great signs. They show great signs. The signs that they're showing is like what they, with the Balfour Declaration, the League of Nations moving Esau into the land. They go, hey, it's a fulfillment of scripture. Then they give some scriptures and people go, oh, yeah, that's right. Mm -mm, Watch what Christ says here. Go ahead. And shall show great signs and wonders. That's just science, then wonders. In so much that if it were possible. If it were possible, which it's not. They shall deceive the very elect. We are the very elect that they're not deceiving. This, all this stuff that the, these Christian commentators, the Balfour Declaration, none of that's deceiving us. Because why? We are understanding what the prophecies are truly saying. So let's go back to the video. Play on. To protect Israel and punish Iran. Hey, wait that a minute. Hold that. Stop. Why a different Bible. Hold that. Give me the Ameri- uh, Type up the American dollar bill. It just popped in my head. 
They said America must protect Israel. At all. Type in American dollar bill. I want the eagle. It's not two R's, it's one R, but it's all right. I know you're black. <laughs> I, want the, I want the part with the eagle. Can you zoom in on the eagle? Zoom in. Can you get closer than that? Or no? Is it going to mess everything up if you even try? Okay. Can y'all see what's over the eagle's head? What do y'all see over the eagle's head? It's the Star of Molech. That's, that, that's the symbol of so-called Israel over there, that Star of Molech. And they got a circle around it, meaning America is one or protecting Israel. That's all that's going on. They're telling you that uh, Israel, that land over there, is like a satellite of the United States of America. They say Israel is a little America in a so-called Middle East. Okay? Go back. Go ahead. ...is also really important to them. Listen to this. The Old Testament story of Esther, about a plot to destroy the Jews of Persia, or modern-day Iran. The Book of Esther plays such an important role for Christian Zionists, they've made multiple movies out of it. He has convinced your husband to destroy all the Jews, including you. Esther saves the Jews by using her persuasion with the king. Evangelicals who are very wrapped up in this kind of theology, because Persia is modern-day Iran, they sort of contextualize this Bible story into foreign policies. Wait, it pause. Did you hear what she said? They contextualize the story of Esther into foreign policies. What America does, what those counselors do with the presidents, they tell them they, and guide them they take certain scriptures, manipulate it, so that it will always benefit either Israel or the United States of America. That's what their job is. Go ahead. Story into foreign policies. Could it be that, that President Trump right now has been sort of raised for such a time as this, just like Queen Esther, to help save the Jewish people from an Iranian menace? As a Christian, I, I certainly believe that's possible. I'm confident that the Lord is at work here. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Vice President Mike Pence both identify as evangelical Christians, and both have enormous influence over American foreign policy. Stop! A Republican you gotta listen to what they said. These guys have enormous influence over, what did they say? American foreign policies. Go ahead. <coughs> and found that Pence routed millions of dollars in foreign aid that had been earmarked for humanitarian projects in Iraq diverting it towards Christian groups in the country. Pause right when there, pause right there. Go back. I just want to put that on the screen. I got to say something about this. See that part? How Mike Pence's office meddled in foreign aid to reroute money to favored Christian groups. Now, I want to pause there. This is what we were talking about yesterday. A, a guy does a video, and he begins to c condemn all Israelite groups, and he goes to say, how come Christians have all these things going on for them? Like they got these big, huge buildings and all that. They got all these huge daycares and they got big media network like CBN, CBN. And they say, Israelites, y'all ain't got SH. Well, when, tell them what happened when we went to look for that building in Atlanta. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. We discussed it already. There was a building. It's, it's, it actually was an old church. We was, me and Captain Shima was looking into it. The price was it was $2.5 million. So what happened was, so after I started I start looking into it, so I started doing research, the building was built by a, by a Christian bank. The bank is like a Christian bank. The Christian bank holds 2 point something billion dollars. This is what they do. Let's say I'm a pastor. I go to them, I said, I have 2,000 members, or I got 3,000 members. They say, okay. Now, they have to come sit in my church for a couple of months to see exactly what's this doctrine. They agree, to, they agree to build me a church. The church might be for $20 million. The money I collected, I have to pay the mortgage every, every month. So when you see those big mega churches, there was a bank called the Christian Bank. That's what they do. So now, that church, the pastor was taking the money. He did, not pay the, he did not pay the mortgage, so they told him out. So now the, church, the bank have to take a loss, sell it for $2.5 million. Guess who bought it? Another Christian group bought it. Yeah, so they have 
they have their own bank that actually finance these big churches. Right. That's yeah. how you see these pastors get those mega churches. Exactly. That's the point I wanted y'all to see. So when people say, oh, you Israelites ain't got nothing, we don't have a bank that's for Israelites that can give us $2.5 million, okay, $20 million. We ain't got that. The, the guy said he wanted to sit here to make sure our doctrine falls in line with Christianity. Do y'all think we're going to get a loan in? <laughs> we ain't getting nothing. So when people jump up and say, y'all, why y'all ain't got nothing? We struggling. We got poor members. We got each putting our little money together to get the little bit we got. All right? So now that goes back to here. Our Mike Pence's office meddled in foreign aid to reroute money to favored Christian groups. This, they are fully funded, many of these Christian groups. Play the video. And found that Pence routed millions of dollars in foreign aid that had been earmarked for humanitarian projects in Iraq, diverting it towards Christian groups in the country. When President Trump approved the drone strike that killed Iran's top military commander in January 2020, it was, according to the Washington Post, at Pompeo and Pence's urging. When President Trump moved the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, the move had more support from American evangelicals than American Jews. The other news swirling around the embassy's move to Jerusalem is what it could signal as part of biblical prophecy. Donald Trump recognized history. He, like King Cyrus before him, fulfilled the biblical prophecy. That evangelical support Pause isn't right there. Pause right there. They said Donald Trump was like King Cyrus. This is how, and that, and that woman was on Fox News, okay? That was everywhere. They said, you saw those articles that Trump is like Cyrus. They was pushing that thing, how he moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Oh, oh, it's prophetic, but give me the prophecy in Daniel 11, uh, 45, please. It has, it's nothing good. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 45. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace. Yeah, that's the embassy. Go ahead. Between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Right, in the land of Israel, between the Mediterranean Sea and the, uh, the Red Sea. Go ahead. Yet he shall come to his end. It says, yet he shall come to his end. Was that it? And none shall help him. And nobody going to be able to help him. Oh, praise the Lord. Can we get a Lord a hand for that? Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, jump up to verse 14. Verse 14. Daniel 11, verse 14. And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. King of the south referring to the Ptolemy dynasty. Also the robbers of thy people. This is the so-called Jews, so-called Jewish man, Amalek. Also the robbers of thy people. Why? Because they robbed the land, they robbed our heritage, our culture, everything. Read that part again also. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves. Exalt themselves as the Jews. To establish the vision. They're establishing the vision that they are the people of God. That's why they took the land over. That's why they created the Suez Canal. Right. All that is to establish the vision that they're the people of the book. Go ahead. But they shall fall. But they shall fall. That's the prophecy. Okay? This is why it says when we stand on our feet, the nations are in fear. Because all these false prophecies these people are putting out, now the prophets are back. We're back. All right. <laughs> Go back a little bit. Go back about a, a second, a minute. Go ahead. When President Trump moved the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, the move had more support from American evangelicals than American Jews. The other news swirling around the embassy's move to Jerusalem is what it could signal as part of biblical prophecy. Donald Trump recognized history. He, like King Cyrus before him, fulfilled the biblical prophecy. That evangelical support isn't an accident. Ooh, a the Trump administration right courts it. And look at Ephraim, After her the fat self on the side over there, nodding her head up and down. Go ahead. Peace plan that would have given Israel unprecedented control over Palestinian land. The Christian Broadcast Network interviewed Trump's ambassador to Israel. You're talking about opening up the Bible, bringing it back to life in ways that I think your listeners could not have even have imagined. It's an opportunity for biblical tourism that I think uh, will, will grow and, and flourish in profound ways. The network's coverage followed his lead. Good news in this proposed peace plan. Israel would have sovereignty over many historical biblical sites. For evangelical Christians in America, the Bible isn't just a foundational text. 
It's a prophetic roadmap that tells the future and shapes the way they view the present. And for an influential group of them, that motivates their support for a foreign policy that they see as affirming those prophecies and a president who depends on their votes. Go back to Isaiah 47 now. Let's go right on back there. So now, let's start at verse 9 once again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 47 and verse 9. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries. The multitude of thy sorceries, go ahead. And for the great abundance of thine enchantments. And for the great abundance, meaning there's a whole lot of it, of thine enchantments. So it ain't talking about the literal, what we might think of witches and warlocks, gob goblins and all that. It's these so-called Christians. Go ahead. Verse 10, for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Who's going to see? Who's going to figure out that we are manipulating scriptures to fit ourselves in a, in a Bible like nobody could even imagine? Who's going to figure this thing out? Go ahead. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. See that? Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. Go ahead. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else besides hey, so me. Listen, we're God. I am God. Go ahead. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it rises, mm -hmm. and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. Ain't going to be able to stop it. When, a, when the, uh, the EU turns on America, when the little terrorist groups pop off here, they're not going to be able to stop this thing. Go ahead. And desolation shall come up, excuse me, shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Go ahead. Stand now with thine enchantments. So now Isaiah, the Lord is saying through Isaiah, stand now with your enchantments, your witchcraft. Go ahead. And with the multitude of thy sorceries. Meaning all those Christian counselors you got, let's see what, the, what power they got. Go ahead. Wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. You see that part? Wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. America is the youngest nation. It came about around 1776. It is the youngest nation on earth. That's what it means when, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. Go ahead. If so be, if so be thou shalt be a able to profit. If so be thou mayest prevail. Right. Th Go ahead. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. That's what we just saw. They're wearied in the multitude of their counsels to do what? Manipulate foreign affairs. Okay. With what? Scriptures. That's what they do. Go ahead. Let now the astrologers. Let now the astrologers. The stargazers. The stargazers. The monthly prognosticators. Monthly prognosticators. Stand up. Stand up. This is all going into the witches and warlocks. It's all going back to their Christian counselors and their scientists. Go ahead. And save thee from <laughs> these things that Let's shall come. Let's see if they can save thee from these things. Go ahead. That shall come upon thee. That shall come upon thee. Read. Behold. No, that was it. Yes, sir. That was it. Give me 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9. This is the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, and verse 9. This is going to precept with what we just read. Go ahead. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. So these Christians, their counsel is not after the Lord. It's after the workings of Satan. From the De Balfour Declaration and all that, they use scripture to say, look, the people of God are back in the land now. It's a fulfillment of prophecy. Then they use the scripture, whoever blesses Israel shall be blessed. Whoever curses Israel shall be cursed. Now they got all nations trying to bless Israel. Oh, bless them. Send money, send money, send money. They send $70 billion to Israel every year. Then they send another allotment to the Christian groups. Read that again. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. So our workings are to be after the workings of the Lord. But Esau's workings is after the workings of Satan, the devil. Read that again. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power. With all power. Because they got the power to do things that we don't have. They got, the, they got not only nuclear power, they got economic power. Okay? They're the ones that had the power to create the Suez Canal and create what we now call a Middle East. They created that term, the Middle East. They created the Suez Canal. They flew these white people from Uzbekistan and Poland and Czechoslovakia there. They taught them the, uh, a form of Hebrew and said, see, fulfillment of prophecy. And everybody goes, oh, oh, con, 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 the hell out of here. Go ahead. 
with all power and signs and lying wonders. He's all lying wonders. Because why? They take scriptures and manipulate it. Go ahead. And with all deceivableness. And with all deceivableness. Go ahead. Of unrighteousness. Of unrighteousness. And them that perish. This is talking about our people. Because, right? because they receive not the love of the truth. And when we tell our people the truth, they reject it. No. You're not the Jews. You're blacks. You're, we're just African Americans. Those are the Jews over there. Go ahead. That they might be saved. That they might be saved. And for this cause. And for this reason. God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And the lies is all these things that we've been seeing in the media, the networks. But guess what? They control the media. Okay, we'll do a video saying we're the Jews. And let's say we get uh, 30,000 views. Esau goes, oh, that's all you got? Look, watch what we can do. They'll hit a button. They've got a, um, a video that goes worldwide. Worldwide instantly get millions and millions. And they go not only to TV, they got radio. They control the press, all of that. So they say, y'all ain't saying nothing. But there is a God. That's what they forget. There is a God. All right? From there, let's go back. Did you finish verse 9? In Revelation? No, no. Or, no, or, no. In, um, yes, that's long. Yes, sir. All right, let's go back to Revelation. I don't forget. We're almost done. What verse did you leave off at? We left off of Revelation 5 and 11. 5 and 11. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 11. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. So there's an innumerable number of angels in heaven. Go ahead. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain. And yes, let me say, and yes, there are women angels. Give me that in Zechariah because that keeps coming up. You know what I want? Yes, sir. Zechariah. Zechariah 5 and verse 9. And my brother got in an argument with his wife because she said there's women angels. He want to throw out the house. What was wrong with you, bro? <laughs> Zechariah chapter 5 verse 9. Then lift I up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lift up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, whether do these bear the ephah? So those two women right there, those were angels. That was, it was symbolic of them carrying the ephah to over here, to Shinar, which is Babylon the Great, to a, and Israel's going to come up in this part of the world first. So now, from there, back to Revelation. Yes, sir. Revelation 5 and verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, Heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. So now you know what's so powerful about that? Because with all the power and glory that Christ has, he's endowing men and women, his people, with his spirit, a portion of his spirit to wake up in his last days. Watch this, and this is what's so astounding. Go to 1 Corinthians 1. We started reading it earlier, but we didn't go all the way down. When you go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, this is why Esau is so shocked. Remember what we read earlier in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 19? Read that 19 again. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. You see that? He's going to bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent, meaning Esau's wisdom. Was that it? All I want is 9. Yes, sir. Jump down to verse... Uh, 26. Verse 26. Watch this. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh. So we will sit back. I remember a lot of times me, the deacons, the captains, when we sit around, when we, uh, 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 we'll be discussing the kingdom, we'll be discussing the destruction of the nations and glorifying when we reign. Many times we, one, we sit back and ask, I wonder who in the world that God is going to Wake up, that's recognized in the world. The Bible says, it says, what did it say again? For not ye, many. Read that again. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh. Because the wise men after the flesh are people like your Cornell West. Uh, your, what's that dude that you, he got a big vocabulary. Yo, Eric Dyson, is that his name? 
Eric, Eric Mark Dyson, people like that. You're, you're, those are like world-renowned scholars. Those are wise men after the flesh. And we often sit back, is the Lord going to call them? The Lord is saying not many of them. Go ahead. Not many mighty. And not many mighty. The mighty is like these athletes. You sit back and say, I wonder if the Lord's going to wake up. Uh, what's that guy? Uh, what's the guy that just lost the fight? I do like him, though. Wilder. Wilder. I do like the guy. But you know, he's a monot- I'm not, listen, these guys that y'all talking about, I'm not dealing with them. You're, 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 get him, oh, you're Mike Tyson's. Uh, who else they got out there? Ron Mayweather's, things like that. And we sit back and talk, and then the scripture's saying it says not many of them. Read that whole verse again. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. Not many noble. These nobles, like, uh, what's that guy, Kufi? He was the Secretary of State a few years ago. I forgot his full name. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, it started with his name was K U F I, a black guy. Uh, people like that. You have noble, or uh, what's that other guy, Desmond Tutu? These are like noble, what they call nobles. Go ahead. Not, but not many noble, go ahead, are called. Not many of them are called. So it says, not many wise men after the flesh. Not many mighty, not many noble are called into this truth. Go ahead. But God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. We are the foolish things. We are the foolish things. Men and women that look just like you and me, who are not in the, the upper echelon of society, people go, the Lord's dealing with y'all? Yes, the Lord's dealing with us, just like with Christ. Remember that? Remember what they said? They said, he comes from Nazareth. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? They also said about Christ, they said, how does this man know letters having never learned? He didn't go to our schools, our institutional learning. He didn't go there. How does he know these things? It's the same thing that's being done with us today. Read. But God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. We're also the weak things. We're the foolish. We're the weak things to confound the mighty. Go ahead. And base things of the world. Guess what? We're also the base things. That's what Paul is revealing here in the spirit. Go ahead. And things which are despised. We, if you didn't know it, we had, remember it says, gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. That's us. We are the despised right here. Go ahead. Have God chosen? Yea. And things which are not. And things which are not. To bring to naught things that are. We're going to bring to naught things that these current governments are going to be brought to nothing. Do you men understand that thing? Yes, sir. This is a great calling that we have. Go ahead. Verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Right, because this is all, we got to give all honor and glory to the Lord of heaven and earth. Let's give the Lord a hand for that thing. <laughs> Praises. And that goes right on back now to Revelation 5. Go ahead, verse 13 again. Revelation 5 and verse 13. Uh-huh. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, blessing and honor. Blessing and honor. Go ahead. And glory. And glory. And power. And power. Be unto him that sitteth upon the throne. Be unto him that sitteth upon the throne. And unto the Lamb forever and ever. And unto the Lamb forever and ever. So John has shown all creation is going to honor the Father and the Son. Go ahead. And the four B said, Amen. And the four B said, Amen, meaning it is true. Go ahead. And the four and twenty elders and, fell down. And the four and twenty elders, one, an angel for every hour. Go ahead. Fell down and worship him that liveth forever and ever. All praises. So with that, brothers and sisters, we're going to close it out, and we're going to say shalom, and we're going to answer some questions before we close out. All right? Anybody want to add anything? What, Dallas didn't want to add nothing? I'm just getting on Dallas. Today's your day. Bishop, all criticism, whether it be positive or negative, is good. All praises, so. Maybe that'll persuade some of these brothers to study. All praise. All praise. All um, praise. So. What we just read in 1 Corinthians, as far as the base people confounding the wise, how are we going to be able to do that, brothers? By what? Say it louder. Okay. All right. I just That's all I wanted to say. That's it. Abigail, you had some questions you were going to uh, answer? Uh, oh, Hosea did. Hosea Go got them. Go ahead, Hosea. You're going to answer them. Put the camera on Hosea. He got it. Hey, this is a good one right here. It 
They say we are blessed to have Captain Isaac. I'm an older woman. And did somebody just go? <laughs> 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 the hell? <laughs> what he hey, security. <laughs> no, I'm just tripping. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to have some charity. I said we are blessed to have Captain Isaac. I'm an older woman, and I just would like a break before the bishop's class start. We love Captain Isaac. So you got your break. I don't praise it. Hold on. Okay. I'm getting the good ones. Captain Isaac is a great teacher. He said, these folks love you, Cap. I'm afraid. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Uh, being in the truth is the best time of my life. Everyone is nice to me, and I am serving the Lord. All praises to the most high. Yeah, we got questions. <laughs> I just want to get this. Do officers' wives eat before other women? Yes. Okay. I think the captain is doing. Uh, you said you don't want me to read none of these, oh, none yeah. of the good stuff. Isaac needs it. Okay. Good, give it to yeah, Isaac. Got you been on them. <laughs> Isaac over there, hot, mad as hell. Just read it for him. And say, hey, I think the, look, I think listen, the, 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 all the positive comments, you know, all praises to the most high, but I don't let that get to my, just read the questions. Well, man. you need the positive yeah. way. They've been, yeah, wait, 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 <laughs> wait, hey. We, need, we want negative comments. That's, yeah, what, Deacon, that's what Deacon Malachi asked right, I got, hey. I got one, I got one. No, right. Hold on, Cap, Cap. Go back to that, the, the one about officers' wives. Go back to that. Yeah, I want to make a comment uh, about do that. Do officer wives eat before other women? It all depends. What I mean by that. There is some sisters who been here for years. They are elder sisters. They might not married. They might be a single sister. They might not married to an officer. Married to an officer or a captain do not make you an elder sister. I want to make that clear. Do not make you an elder sister. I now can, you're going to be... I'm going to give an example. Uh -huh. In Jamaica, I, I'm going to throw the school out of Jamaica. I'm going to throw them under the bus. Uh, a sister been in the school five years. It's going on, oh no, I think almost seven years. Seven years. She was from the beginning. The brother marries a young sister. She's 20. 19, she was 19. The sister that I'm talking about that's been here for seven years is about... She's, I think she's 52. So now you got the young girl. He made the young girl who's 19 the senior woman over all of them. It was insane. So the older lady said, how are you going to tell me about uh, member scriptures and let the older women teach the young women how to love their husband, love their children? She said, you just came out your mama's behind yesterday. What are you going to teach me? So we had to correct. We had to send out. I think we sent Amaziah out there to correct that whole thing. So you get officers and cat that will marry a young girl. When I say young, I mean she just came in the truth yesterday. She's not senior to the women that have been here five, six, seven, eight, nine years. She's not. Y'all understand that? Wait, do you men understand that? Uh huh. Okay. Go ahead, Hoshea. I'd, uh, it's a too much gossip with the sisters uh -oh. in Dallas. Wow. All right, look. Wow. Get uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 15. I'm going to show y'all how to cut gossip down. First, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse, I mean, chapter 9, verse 15. The book of Ecclesiastes, or Sirach, chapter 9, verse 15. Let thy talk be with the wise, and all thy communication in the law of the Most High. So this is one of the ways to cut gossip down. Let your talk be with the wise, and all your communication. Uh, in the, read that again. In the law of the Most High. Let thy talk be with the wise, and all thy communication in the law of the Most High. Hey, that's what you sisters should be talking about. Y'all should be talking about the commandments of God. Uh, Titus 2 explains all the things that you sisters be, should be talking about. Get Leviticus chapter 19, verse hey, 16. let me say something. Let me interject real quick. In the scripture that you just read, all of that is expounded on by Mother Shamar and so forth on the Titus 2. Some of these sisters don't attend Titus 2. Like I said earlier, Cap, it's like pulling their teeth out just to get them to come to Titus 2. All right, so some of the officers, your wives, they must attend Titus 2. I tell you that all the time. That's going to cut down on all the gossip and all the stuff that we're hearing now. All right, you sisters got to get in order, but in order to do that, you men got to be in what? All right. Okay, all praises. All right, Cap, you help sum the rest of that up. I just say about favorites, do you guys pick or have favorites? I want to read some of John 13 and 23. Let's just say, do we pick or have favorites? 
Hold on now, D. You can't talk about the way nobody talk. For real. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Hey, this is crazy. <laughs> Not from this guy. No. <laughs> Look, they agree with me, too. <laughs> Hey, John 13, verse 23. The book of John, chapter 13 and verse 23. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. So Jesus had a favorite. So, you know, just to clear that up, Jesus had a favorite. I say, uh, one. Hey, read that one. I can't see how. Yeah. No, I don't speak Hebrew. Not yet. It's saying, I, I'm going to, I guess I, I guess you got it. Okay, it say, what's your vision on kids being born in the truth or the one young 12 years and up are uh, diligent and smart? What's that in second edge, just one? About the kids being born in the truth. Y'all know what I'm talking about, second edge, just one, something like that. Let me go, let me find it. I'll show you the Bible vision about kids being born in the truth. Second Edges chapter 1, verse 35. The book of Second Edges, chapter 1 and verse 35. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come. Now that people that shall come is talking about us, talking about, you know, uh, the brothers and sisters on this side of the earth. The Lord going to come save us and he going to put us back in our land, Reach. Which not having heard of me. Meaning we didn't grow up in this truth, Read. Yet shall believe me. To whom I have showed no signs. Remember our forefathers, a lot of them, they seen signs in the wilderness. We haven't seen no signs, read. Yet they shall do that I have commanded them. But we still keep the commandments of God, read. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. Read. To take witness. To read take that to, again from the top, verse 37. I take to witness the grace of the people to come. Whose little ones rejoice in gladness. Why would the little ones rejoice in gladness? Because a lot of these kids that's born in the truth, they don't have to worry about uh, being indoctrinated with Christmas, being indoctrinated with Easter, being in, you know, all the different indoctrinations out there, being taught that, being indoctrinated with the white image of Christ. Yo, the little ones to come, now they learning that what? Christ is black, you know what I'm saying? They learning about the Feast of Dedication and all the high holy days we celebrate. They learning about the Sabbaths. So he said, uh, I take to witness the grace of the people to come whose little ones rejoice in gladness, read. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. Okay, so let me see the next question. I'm, gonna try to run, I'm trying to run through them, Bishop. Uh, it said, how to remain meek and humble even when your husband is being rude and angry with you for no reason. Go to First Peter 3 and 1. So if he being the devil, sis, all you sisters, y'all should know this one scripture right here. First Peter 3 and 1. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. So let's just say he being the devil in the house. The scriptures say that he may also be one without the word by the conversation of your uh, of of the wives. <coughs> Meaning, you sisters, look through your conversation. You can sit up there and humble his spirit if he been the devil, because he'll get to the point of like, man, look, I've been being mean, I've been angry in the house, and he was like, this woman had just been to treat me good for all the evil that I done to her. And if he a righteous man, he'll come to you, you know, he'll apologize, and you know, what I'm saying he'll fix the situation. Read on, verse two. Verse two. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with uh, coupled with fear. Now, one other thing, 1 Corinthians 13. I tell a lot of people this. I think he being a demon in the house. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, start at verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4. Charity suffereth long. Meaning you got to be long-suffering. Long-suffering meaning to be, you know, be able to be patient dealing with somebody that's troubling you. Read. And is kind. So if he being mean to you, you want to continue to be kind to him. I know a lot of people are like, but how, how should I do this? You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of us, we uh, react based on the way people treat us. But now Christ don't want us to move in that spirit. 
Remember, he said at the end of the commandment is charity. Read. Charity envieth not. Read. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Read. Though it not behave itself unseemly. Even though he might not be treating you right in the house or he might be angry and stuff. It, look, the scriptures say charity behave itself not, see, uh, behave itself, I mean, do it not behave itself unseemly, meaning you ain't going to act inappropriate or out of character. Read on. Seek not her own. Read. Is not easily provoked. Don't be easily provoked unto anger. Remember the scripture say, he that is soon angry deal foolishly. Read. Thinketh no evil. Read. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. So apply that right there. I tell everybody, look, go through... Uh, the scripture, I mean, read uh, 1 Corinthians 13 about charity and like what say, suffer long Ed, and envy it not. You know what I'm saying? Look up all these characteristics of how Paul is telling us we should be in dealing with one another. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 is showing us how to deal with one another. Uh, it say, what qualities slash things should a husband and wife have individually as one flesh before having children. What, what's the, the one in Sirach? Have, no, have your wife after your mind? Or? Gotcha. Yeah, it's in, yeah, read that. Sirach chapter 7 and verse 26. Has thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not. Forgive not thyself over to a light woman. So one of the main qualities that y'all should have is basically the commandments of God, period. You know what I'm saying? If his mind after the commandments of God, your mind should be after the commandments of God. And it'll be easier for you, you know what I'm saying, to raise your church. I mean, raise your children. That's how we all become one flesh. You know what I'm saying? Through the trials and tribulations we go through from applying the commandments of God. Uh, I'm finna switch it up. You want to answer some of these? <laughs> Is there an IUIC policy against chewing on a chew stick, tree bark, similar to sugar cane or a honey stick? Is it an overreach of rules if this is not allowed? Benefits, gums, teeth, and breath? No, there's there's no yeah, policy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah the first way right, 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 right. Do we deal with the same sins... Lust we did in a previous life. Is there a class that expounds on regeneration? Deacon Abiel, you want to touch on that? Uh, past <laughs> sins. Get John 9. Book of John. John, the ninth chapter, first verse. Yes, sir. Book of John, chapter 9, verse 1. And, it, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Our ancestors weren't idiots. They understood the scriptures. They understood that, yes, you can be judged for something you did in your last life. You don't, you don't won't necessarily know what it is, but, yes, it does travel. So... Act right. Keep the commandments. Um, Where's the one I just saw? There's another that says, if you have the solution but you're a woman, how do you get the men to buy into it? <laughs> it sounds like a loaded question, doesn't it? Yes, a loaded It sounds question. very loaded. Um, how do you get the men to buy into it? Start crying. Yeah, yeah, Bishop brought it out earlier. Start crying. Start crying. And, uh, what's that? Genesis 21. Let me show you something real quick. Genesis 21. Mm. Real quick. Genesis 21. 
Start it. I gotta get it to it. I gotta look at it. Start at. Because sometimes we jump the gun, and I'm gonna use this in a marital situation. Cause that's kind of, it. It sounds like something that's pr brought to leadership to enact in the congregation, but it also can be a wife asking that about her husband as well. So I'll deal with both parts of that in a second. Um, Genesis 21 and verse, um, I'm in 20. Look at verse 12. The book of Genesis chapter 21, verse 12. Uh, go up a little bit, go up to, start a ver look at verse nine real quick. Yes, sir. Genesis 21, in verse 9, Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, mm -hmm. which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Mm -hmm. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And, and Bishop also brought this out as well, that this is the fulfillment of prophecy. The Lord was dealing with the sister in a certain manner. Now, look at what the Lord says in the next verse. Verse 11. And the thing because was, now the wife is, giving, is instruct, or telling her husband something, but what the husband doesn't realize at the time is this is of the Lord, right? So now you have to give the uh, time for the Lord to actually deal with the husband or the man after you have made the suggestion. This is what people really don't. Sisters don't do this. They have patent, uh, don't have much patience. Once something is suggested to the men, you don't allow the Lord to deal with the men in seeing what you may have seen. Everybody, y'all understand that? So read the next verse. Verse 11. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because mm -hmm. of his son. Mm -hmm. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. And all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So the Lord just confirmed what the sister said because the Lord was only going to be dealing with Isaac. So you have to let, huh? So you have to let the, after the suggestion is made, let the Lord deal with it. Don't be a pressing or, or loud crying woman. You got to listen to me and do it right now. No, 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 no. Let the Lord do his thing. The Lord is going to do his thing. Right, right, Cap. Let me add to that. Yes, sir. Look at Judith chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. It's about you sisters who, who may have good ideas. I want you to see what Judith said and what was said about her. Judith chapter 8 and verse 28. Then said Ozias to her, All that thou hast spoken, hast thou spoken with a good heart. So, because Judith had told, given them counsel. And the men said, all that you have spoken, we know that you've said it with a good heart. Go ahead. And there is none that may gainsay thy words. There was no if ands about what she said. What she said was correct. And all the men agreed. Now watch this. For this is not the first day <coughs> wherein thy wisdom is manifested. So she had a reputation of wisdom coming out of her mouth. Go ahead. But from the beginning of thy days, all thy people have known thy understanding because thy disposition of thy, of the, because of the dis, because the disposition, oh God. sorry, because the disposition of thine heart is good. Now, Captain Eisen, you you help me out here. Last night, when we asked, now I'm not talking about the men. I'm only talking about the women. I said, how many read four chapters a day? Do you remember, remember how many women raised their hand? Three or four. Okay. So, sisters, what you want to do is you want to build a reputation that comes through your you also studying, praying, and applying. And, and listen, many t we get many emails from sisters and the sisters that are, that who have a reputation because we'll call, hey, what reputation this sister got? If we hear she's always into gossip, we, we, we take in your email, crumble it, and throw it in the garbage. But if you have a good reputation, we consider it. Like in many of the other schools, we, there are sisters who we could look to to handle certain things like we're doing right now in other schools. But now, Dallas, we're waiting to see what y'all got going on. Yes. Let me add to that, Bishop. Yeah, yeah. And then not only the four chapters a day, um, brothers and sisters, but you have the, um, the 15 minutes with the captains. We got a, a whole bunch of videos out there. All right? So instead of sitting home watching Atlanta Housewives, I don't even know if that still plays, or whatever, try to keep your mind in these scriptures. There's a whole bunch of videos 24-7 all day. Right. There's no excuses. There is no excuses. You know what the sister could do also? Why don't you tell uh, Sister uh, uh, Yoella? 
Tell her your good idea, and if it's good, she'll let Isaac know. How about that? And if it's bad, you'll definitely know. Romans 6 and 10, what does it mean when Paul said, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Let's get that. Romans 6 and 10. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 10. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, mm -hmm. but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. So let's jump over one chapter. You can keep reading, but let's jump over <laughs> one chapter because it gets straight to it. Or one verse up. Yeah, go one verse up. Verse 9. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death have no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Go ahead. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now here's the next verse. Let not sin, therefore, let not sin reign, therefore, in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. So verse 9 says, Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. He died for the nation of Israel to allow us repentance, allow us to have a... Uh, 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 and, and out back to the Lord, give us back that avenue back to the Most High God. So when you read down in verse 12, it says, let not therefore sin uh, reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Don't obey the sins thereof because now Christ gave us the way to get back to the Most High God. There's no more reign of sin in our bodies. Jump over to chapter 7 real quick, verse 9. The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. So now, when you, when you live by the lust of the flesh or you, you're alive in this body, you're living according to the lust of the world. Now, in verse 9, it says, I was alive once. So before we learned the laws of God, we thought we were actually living. We thought that was life. We thought we were living our best life. But when you learn the laws of God, you're actually killing that old man. You're killing that lustful side of you. That's the dying part. You're killing that old man. You're literally putting yourself to death if you really are in repentance. All right? Oh, rap. Uh, yeah, so it's a lot. I'm sorry. Um, I can't read this one. It says, what? <laughs> what should I do? Oh, yeah, I see it. It says, what should I do if my household is out of order and, and, and half my family is in, is in the truth and half is not? Okay, so it says, I'm a single sister in the truth, still living under my father's household, and he is lukewarm should I move out? Oh, Deke answered it? Okay, okay, okay. All right, that's been answered already. Um, how do I deal with my rib when spirits are on her? I find myself trying to talk, talk the spirit out of her. Sometimes it works, sometimes uh, it... I answered that. <laughs> I answered this yesterday. Brothers, learn how to walk away. I keep telling y'all, a leader, you need discipline. It take a lot of discipline to walk away. You going back and forth, you ain't going to win a damn thing. Some of you actually think you're going to win a prize. You're not going to win nothing going back and forth. Keep in mind, you are the Lord of the house. I give an example about dirty dishes in the sink. Once you said... Can you please get one of those dishes? She buck up. Let's, don't worry about it. Somebody's going to wash the dishes. It ain't going to be you. So why are you going crazy? She's going to buck up, but she's going to do it anyway. So why are, you, why are you arguing? Learn how to walk away. Some of you, you are too sensitive. 
you are, I hate to say, you are too effeminate. Some of you are too damn women living in the damn house. Stop. Stop. I keep telling you, sisters, the, the woman weapon is her, is her mouth. Especially the Judah woman. Hey, let me, go ahead. So, to say, she's going to say a word to try to hurt you. But in reality, is that really hurting you? That's the point. That's not really hurting you. Word don't hurt you. You, you need to learn that. Word is just word. You've been with the woman for years. Now, all of a sudden, a little word hurts you feeling? Come on, man, stop. Why, you don't know who you was married? Just stop. Walk away, man. Let me say something on that real quick. And we just read 1 Peter 3. When you jump down to verse 9, it says, don't go railing for railing. So that's why when Deacon says to just discipline yourselves to walk away, it's right there in the scriptures, not going railing for railing. Um, it says, not against him, but uh, the lack of addressing soldiers and members' marriages. I guess she's saying it's a problem. The lack of addressing soldiers' and members' marriages. The lack of uniformness in teaching the basics. The explanations of breaking bread and that sound, ho holy days. That sounds like a damn crit look. That doesn't sound like it's coming from a woman, but not to nothing against a woman. First and foremost, we teach marriage all the time. The soldiers, you have a lot of people, Bishop, who have backdoor marriages. And then the result of their debacle, their disastrous marriages, so now they try to push it on the leadership. Look, just like the deacon said earlier, once you start a backdoor marriage and you catch in hell, there's nothing I can do for you. There's nothing I can do for you. The only time you're going to get counsel is when you follow the right steps. Do y'all understand? Y'all understand that? And we go over the, bait, the, the importance of breaking bread all the time because it's, it's televised when Deacon Asaph does it. So here you are, you're in a, in a, in a, a crappy marriage, and now you want to go over un the understanding of breaking bread? Hey. Everybody knows the understanding of breaking bread. Am I right or wrong? Hey, Cap. Hey. Even, even with that question, you can tell they can't be watching the classes that's coming out. Because, like, uh, headquarters, every feast day they go over New Moon, the destruction of Esther, uh, Nicanor or Nicanor. I don't know why I always say Nicanor. Nicanor. <laughs> Esther. Uh, all, the, all the classes are already online. Get 2 Timothy 2 and 15 real quick. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Just even just with that question right there saying he need to go over more, let you know a lot of time you ain't studying yourself. A lot of this information is already out there, y'all. Read that real quick. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. You see that? You're supposed to study. And then once you study, if you got questions, ask the question. Did I say that right? Ask, ask, ask the question. I say, question. Hey, <laughs> hey, you know, hey, you know I'm going to put the mic hey. down. <laughs> Hey, you know what's you know what's you question know what, question cap you know what yeah. we you know what's amazing about that is that we have a we have like a job form yeah. where every week brothers and sisters can go and put their questions basic milk right and we'll answer them every week so i don't know where that question is coming from they are not study it right but it's, you know i'll say this some people i'm not saying that sister i don't i'm i'm not sure some people are what I call spiritual vampires. I'm yes. going to tell you what a spiritual vampire is. You'll say, no backdoor marriages, sister, brother, wait before y'all get together. And they don't listen, right? They don't listen. They get they wham bam, they got uh, juice everywhere, it's nasty as hell. They, I'm sorry. They say, I was, we married, we're going to get married. So I'm going to give an example. Feast of Tabernacles, we tell his brother, no, we tell, the sister goes, I like this brother over here. I said, don't marry that brother. He's immature. He ain't ready yet. Wait. Give him. A, he needs another year, two and a half. She goes, okay. Does she listen? No. She goes, bangs the brother, back door. So next piece of tabernacles, she's coming on a line. She says, uh, uh, I'd like some counsel. So I said about marriage. She goes, yes, I want to counsel about marriage. I said, um, so do you listen to counsel? She says, yes, I love counsel. I listen. I said, really? So when we told you, don't marry that brother. What did you do? She said, 
I married him. I, I don't listen. I said, exactly. I said, so if you don't listen over that, what makes, what makes us think that whatever we tell you now, you're going to listen to? You're not going to listen. And here's the proof they don't listen. You'll say, um, uh, brother, go get a job or stop. Well, let's, whatever the argument is, stop yelling at her. Sister, don't do A, B, or C. The next week, she'll come back and she'll have the same question again. The same counsel she wants. And you got to, before you get into it, say, ask her this. Did you, Ed, did you follow the first counsel we gave you? The second she says no, say, go have a seat. Because what they do every week, not these, sis, not these lovely sisters here, but some sisters, they come back week after week with the same crap. And you brothers be entertaining that. They don't entertain that. Once they didn't listen to the first counsel, they go to sit down. When you, when you obey that one, then you come back with the next one. Y'all understand that? Spiritual vampires. They just want to drain your life. Go ahead. This one says, uh, how, how do you keep the balance between examining, I guess, yourself and being overly critical? How do you keep the balance between examining yourself and being overly critical? What's that? Oh no. Give me that give me that um examine yourselves in Corinthians. It says, How do you keep a balance between examining yourself and not being overly critical? Now when they say overly critical they talk about overly <laughs> critical concerning themselves or others. That that's where it's a little vague. But it, she, the person's talking about examining themselves, so I'm assuming it's themselves. I'm not, because last night we discussed that. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. Yeah, we did. So I'm, I, that's why I asked yeah, that question. Exactly. Right, right. Where you going? Oh, no. No, no Second Corinthians 13? No, no. Go ahead. Yeah, re read that real quick. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, mm -hmm. prove your own selves. <coughs> know ye not your own selves? Now, now the, po the point is, the point is knowing your own self. It's very important because when, just like what we were dealing with before, the person you used to be opposed to who you are now. You have to know the person you are now is according to God's laws. Prior to this, you didn't know God's laws. So you're knowing your own self according to the standard that God has set in place. You're proving yourself according to the standards of which God put in place, the laws of God. So you have to know, am I being overly critical or am I just living up to the standard that God set in place? God put laws in place. That's how you examine yourself according to God's laws. Being overly critical is when you're afflicting yourself after your own mind, not right. according to God's laws. Bishop, you going to say something? I was going to say an overly critical person, you know, we all got criticism about ourselves when we examine ourselves. The overly critical person is the one who will see a, they need a change, but they don't do anything to fix it. They just say, oh, my teeth is big and bucked, and I won't want to fix it. And every week, I'm fat, I'm sloppy, I'm out of shape, but you never go to the gym, and you never change your eating habits. That's overly critical. Examining yourself is that fine balance where you're making the necessary changes to your life. And it says, can we make a case that MLK, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Nat Turner, et cetera, could be elect men from laying, for laying down their lives without the keeping of the laws? Can uh, we make a case? Listen, no, you cannot. Well, this is, the, this is the only scripture you can go to. You can go to Romans chapter 9. Let's, let's go to it right quick. Yes, sir. I ain't going to read the whole thing. I just want one scripture. Yes, sir. Uh, is it, what is that? Verse 15. Uh, 15? Yes, sir. Let's Rome, read 15. Romans chapter 9, verse 15. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. The only thing we can say is that we pray, we hope, most I got have mercy on them. Because we all know they didn't die in the law. But because, again, they love their people, they sacrifice themselves for the people. So we just, we just, I just pray, most I got to have mercy. People like Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, uh, Martin Luther King, because they actually <laughs> give their life for the people. That's how much they love their people, even though they didn't know they're Israel. But they give their life. They put their life. Because a lot of stuff we be able to go in the street and do what we do is because of these men. We cannot deny that. 
That's why we should not spoke evil of these men. Regardless, that yes, they didn't know who they are, but they put their life on the line. Because of them, most I got to use them to put us today where we can teach our people. So you should respect these men. That's, uh, I listen, I don't want to digress, but that's why that documentary, I, I'm so pissed off about that Malcolm X documentary. When I say that thing pissed me off, a simple Negro put the, put, kill one of the greatest leaders, and he's bragging about it, and nobody do a damn thing about it. That thing pissed me off. But anyway, let's, let's move on. And the last one is, according to John 15 and 13, no greater love than to lay down your life for your brother. Can you read that real quick? John 15, 13. Yes, sir. The book of John chapter 15 and verse 13. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Okay. Two, two quick verses. Um, Acts 15, 26. Then I want to go to Romans 16. The book of Acts chapter 15 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. Men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as you see, leadership is going all over the world to countries that laws differ from this place. What do you think they're doing? They're actually putting their lives on the line for the nation of Israel. This is them laying down their life for their brethren. They, listen, they, you, man, I'm, I'm going to digress. Romans 16, <coughs> Romans 16 and 4. The book of Romans. Now, some people will read that and they'll think, I have to jump in front of a bullet. I have to, you know, uh, 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 do all kind of Superman antics. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That's well and good. If you want to stop a bullet, that's fine. That's a part of it. But the greater part is we're commanded to go out into the chief place of concourse. We're commanded to go out to the highways and hedges. We're commanded to make our faces stronger than our foreheads stronger than their foreheads. Why? Because they're going to try to intimidate us. They're going to try to threaten us. They're going to try to do us bodily harm. But for whose sake is that work being done? You're putting your life on the line. You're hazarding and jeoparding your lives for your nation. You're doing it for brothers and sisters who you've never met before. Romans 16, verse the, 4. The book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Who have uh, Start at verse 3. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. Greet Priscilla and Aquila. My helpers in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. You see that thing? Brothers and sisters will risk their own freedom, their own lives, in order to open up avenues for the gospel to be preached. There's brothers and sisters who will reach out to, um, there was a uh, bishop, the, the, the news station you were on, the sister that had you on the show, she lost her job after that, correct? So they put their life on the line to allow the gospel to be preached. And that's a, listen, and we want to salute all of you brothers and sisters who are doing that, helping the gospel to go to the next level. That's jeoparding your life. That's putting your life in hazard because not only is your physical life in jeopardy, but your livelihood as well. That, and that was, that was the last one I had. Hey, let's pull up that announcement. Let's show the video first, and then I'll read what um, Officer Netramaya sent me. Change up. Bad influence don't go 
but I feel rearranged. Rearranged. I feel progress in our life. Some people stay stuck. Them can't move. Them asleep all them life. Them never ever wake up. Them still asleep. Open up your eyes. Me want to feel and I stay strong. Me a sing a new tune while some man still a sing the same song. Same song. Them a sing the same song. Jaja a guide me humble since day one. All right, so that's um, the video on Passover. Uh, let me get the link while I read it, please. Can we put it on the screen? All right, let me just read this. Uh, all right. It says, all second payments are overdue and must be paid immediately. A Facebook video has been created for those that are having issues making the final payment. Do not send any payments directly to PayPal. I'm going to repeat that again. Do not send any payments directly to PayPal. For those who need to book a hotel room, send an email to info at royaleventplanning.net. That's info at royaleventplanning.net. The Passover has been made available to all members so reach out to your camp leaders to obtain the registration information immediately. Lastly, for those who will not be attending the Passover in North Carolina, you may still purchase tickets to attend the original royalty concert in North Carolina. Please send an email to info at royaleventplanning.net. Once again, that's info at royaleventplanning.net to receive instructions on how to purchase the original royalty concert tickets separately all right do we have any uh, announcements any other announcements oh is it let me all right Uh, shalom, Most High Christ bless. I'm also Ezekiel from West Texas, uh, Lubbock. I just wanted to let everybody know that uh, we're doing a fundraiser after the Sabbath. We're raffling off a 50-inch television uh, for our fundraiser um, to help us move forward toward getting to school. So if everybody could participate, uh, it's five dollars a ticket, uh, twenty tickets. Uh, I mean, five tickets for twenty dollars. So if anybody want to buy a ticket, uh, we'll be around. At Any name change this week? No? All right, Cap. Um, there's a soldier, Zuriel Amatai Ben Israel of Trinidad is no longer a Greek. All praises. Um, also in... I guess it's in Philly, bro, Yanai, Yanai, Gad Israel, oh no, San Antonio, sorry, is no longer a Greek. All praise. <laughs> so, okay. Sister Ashira of IUIC Birmingham is, is no longer a Grecian. All praise. <laughs> and Soldier Moses and Sister Dorcas of IUIC South Carolina camp are no longer Greeks. All praises. All praises. All right, all praises, um, Bishop. That was a beautiful class once again. Um, right. Hopefully, you brothers took notes and was and uh, apply and study was written. Uh, sisters as well, uh, deacons. I want to thank you, Deacon Abiel, Deacon Malachi, for coming out, captains.
and Bishop, of course, uh, and all the work that you do, Bishop, I want you to know that it's appreciated, deacons, um, as well, all right? So we, as a, as a token of our, as a token of our appreciation, what do you mean what happened to the screen? No, we're still online. Yosef, what's going on? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yosef, hold on for that, hold, hold on. So as a token of our appreciation, Bishop, we would like to uh, present you with something. Sisters, come on, make it happen. You wanted me to read something? Is it about Passover? So bring it back up, it's important. Let me do that while the sisters go get the stuff for the bishop. Uh, Passover 2020 again, uh, unleavened bread recipes. Must make at least five 13 by nine aluminum pans with, with lids. Fill out the new form found on the GroupMe and Telegram forum for kitchen and bread teams. No later than March 8th. The breads that you bring to Passover must match the breads on the form. Each pan must include the ingredients on an index cards. Okay, if you want to be on the bread team, contact Soldier, Soldier Aitan uh, on Telegram. Email itan.israel.iuicsc at gmail.com. And Aitan is spelled E-I-T-A-N. All right, sisters, come forth. Come. Get, a, get a mic from there. Captain Shemaya, get the sisters a mic. Shalom, most high in Christ. Bless everyone. Thank you all for coming. Did you all enjoy your Sabbath? Okay, all praises. It's an honor and privilege for us to be standing before you all. Uh, we could not have done any of this without our leaders <laughs> uh, showing us and guiding us how to do everything. Your passion for reaching the four corners of the earth is unmatched. You all are truly our superheroes in purple and gold. You all help raise us. This is a small token of our, creation, our, our appreciation for Bishop leadership from Captain Isaac and all the leadership of IUIC Dallas. She says superheroes. Wow. I know, my wife don't call me a superhero. Now I'm going to yell at home. Thank you all so much. We give all thanks to the Lord. And you brothers and sisters, like we always said, what we do, we couldn't do without your constant support. Uh, we definitely thank you and we love each and every one of you. Abiel, uh, did you wash your hands? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, praises. It was the kale. Abiel, they got here. Say something. All oh, praises. Thank you, uh, Dallas, even though Lemuel didn't invite me. Where's Lemuel at? Dang, is he gone for? Oh, there he is. Not tonight? Okay. Yes, sir. Deacon, they just announced the names that were changed. Now, you made a bet with us. Yes, sir. You said by next cruise, yep. you and your whole family's name's going to be changed. What was the bet? $100. $100. Yes, sir. Okay. For each deacon. Each de yes, Whoa, wait, each wait deacon, a minute. Each deacon. Each deacon. Now, you heard that, right? I bet, each deacon I bet you. It was no, you. No, no, it was all of us. Oh, all of us. Sab, it'd be cheaper for me just to do it. So now we know if it's each deacon, it's going to cost you less to change it than pay each deacon. So that's going to force you. But anyway, I want to say thank you to Dallas. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, sisters. Cap, you do an amazing job here. Brothers, remember when I, I told you earlier in the early class I did, Captain Isaac is only one man. He cannot do this without you. You guys need to stand by him. Let's push together. Let's push together. Keep in mind, this is not about you. Whatever you do, always remember, this is about build the nation of Israel. Keep that in mind. So let's continue. Thank you, uh, Cap. Thank you, officers. Sisters, 
Devola, thank you. Thank you, all your sisters. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's my second time here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, going, I'm coming back to Dallas. Yeah. They treat, me good in, they treat me good in Dallas, Bishop. Yeah, they always treat me good in Dallas. I don't know about Austin yet. I wouldn't know about Austin, but uh, I don't know like about you Austin said, yet. Dick, Captain hey, Isaac. Hey, look, look at Officer Alex. <laughs> He's shaking his head. Hey, you know that uh, <laughs> Captain Isaac and Sister Yoella, his wife, they came from New York City, so they were brought up very, that's why we were comfortable with them, husband and wife, coming out here to help, help you men and women, because we know that they're firmly established, and they ain't going to lead you wrong. And I see you got some good sisters over here to help. Yeah? Uh, Shoshana. Shoshana. Oh, yeah. I always remember her name. Hey, I I, yeah, I know. That sister right there, she's been around forever. Yes. I love that sister. <laughs> yes. She's been around forever. Oh, please. Hey, real quick, um, I want to say something. I want to shout out to Dallas, Captain Isaac. Um, for a long time, I've seen Dallas uh, from the beginning, all right? And Dallas came a long way. Dallas had a lot of issues. Uh, in the past, and all praise of the Most High that uh, Captain Isaac, the Most High blessed Dallas with Captain Isaac come down here and grant that stability and that strength, all right? So uh, y'all got a beautiful school. This place looked like a baby Russia icon slash uh, 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 Atlanta school, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, y'all definitely stepped up y'all game. Um, all praise of the Most High. I just want to, uh, uh, let's give a hand clap for Dallas, the grand opening, and Captain Isaac is being a good leader. Oh, by the way, Captain Isaac, man, their school is beautiful. Some of these pictures, they're going to end up in Atlanta. I hate to tell you this. Because <laughs> that's what I do. I take pictures and bring it back home. All praises to the yes. most high. All right, let's break bread. In honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for laying his life down for us. All right, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we say, Amen. Brothers, faith, patient, salvation, the truth. faith, patient, salvation, the truth. faith, patience, salvation. The truth. Who's the king? Christ. Who's the king? Christ. What color is he? Black. What color is he? Black. Who am I? Israelite. Who am I? Israelite. What time is it? Time. What time is it? Time. Now, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His what? All praises to the Most High. Hey, Israel, do me a favor. If you guys love our leadership, you love Bishop 